What's up, guys? We are live. So the podcast, a lot of you guys have been asking for is finally here, and I'm so glad we can make it happen. We got the man that needs no introduction, Mystery on the left, and Bexter, also someone who's quite prominent on Mystery's channel. Uh, you guys are business partners, right? We are. And wingmen. More importantly, wingmen. Wingmen, wing business partners. Okay, friends, I'm sure. So yeah, this is mm -hmm. going to be awesome. Uh, so uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, what I recommend you do is you go to the community tab that I posted because there's going to be a lot of questions. I can't go through everything in the live chat. And the ones that get the most likes and upvotes will be the ones I read. Also, I have quite a few questions of my own. But anyway, I'm really excited to uh, do this podcast with you guys. And thank you so much for being here. Thanks it is for having a us. pleasure. Alex, thank you. You're famous. Am I? <laughs> well, you are on now. The internet, on the internet, you are famous. How familiar I, are you guys with my content? Well, I've had a chance uh, to see a few of your videos. Uh, one of them was an interview with Ross Jeffries, whom I've met. Yep. And uh, another one was where you were macking down a beautiful girl. Yeah, there's quite a few of those. Okay. okay fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let, let's start off with this. So mystery. Typically, I even though I think you don't need an introduction, I typically just do that anyway. So just maybe give like a 30 second overview of like, what do you feel like the most important like theme in your life and just kind of who you are and what you've been about for anyone for like the 2% of people who are not familiar with you? Okay, fair. Well, I've popularized some ideas or schools of thought in the pickup artist area. My name is Mystery. My real name is Eric Von Markovic. Though all my friends do continue to call me Mystery, that is from my TV show on VH1 called The Pickup Artist. I went by the gnome de plume Mystery for my books as well. Mm. That's my background. I'm 52 years old. I'm originally from Toronto, and I'm currently in Spain. Now, Baxter is my wingman of and counterpart for 15 years now. We have done scores and scores of pickup artist boot camps around the world together. And he is one of the most gifted pickup artists that I have ever seen in my life. And I've met many. Okay. Bexter. That's awesome. So yeah, Bexter, uh, tell the world Thanks for doing my intro. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> no, uh, well, my little ad is I started at 19, so I feel very privileged to start at such a young age. And um, I, um, I guess I just saw it as my calling and I've been doing pickup longer than I haven't. I think I started in 96 or 97. It was a bit vague. And I was a virgin before I started. And then afterwards, you know, the world is my oyster. Or our yeah. oyster. One interesting thing I learned about Bexter is that he's, what, you said 46, right? 46, yeah. Yeah, yeah, homie looks young. Uh, okay, so how did you guys yeah. meet and start working together? I guess would be my first question. I always answer this one, do you wanna? <laughs> no, you go, you go for it, Bexter. Okay, uh, I, I was running the VIP clubs in London because obviously I was out gaming quite a lot and I met lots of girls and I'd go to clubs with lots of girls and they would want to pay me to bring the girls all the time and give us free drinks and all that. So I got into that sort of lifestyle as well, the VIP lifestyle, hot game. And uh, I, I wanted to, uh, Mystery was doing a book tour and I never met Mystery. And in my mind, I was like, I remember even before the game came out, I said to my friend, who introduced me to the game back in 97 or uh, six. And he goes, I said, who is the best? I need to know who the best is. And he's like, mystery. There's a guy called mystery. And and I said, well, tell me more. And he goes, well, he's a mystery. But <laughs> and, uh, and so I was learning it before the game came out. I was learning mystery stuff, but it wasn't like I couldn't get hold of lots of it. And so when he was doing a tour here, we had a mutual friend and I said, look, I want to put that tour on. I'll do it in a VIP club. Afterwards, all the guys that came to watch, 50, 70, I don't know how many, mm. at the end, they all got to go into the VIP club afterwards, which many of them couldn't normally get into. But Mystery and I, uh, we met two lovely ladies and we bounced. Mm. So after that, we decided to become, you know, to become good friends, do a few events. And then before you know it, we've done 250, 300 boot camps together around the world. Nothing brings people together like uh, pulling two chicks. That's the ultimate. Exactly. That's what it was. Common gotcha. interests. 
All right, so so Mister, here's a question for you. So I think like most people, I first learned about you from the book The Game. Uh, so here's a question I have: How much of the game is accurate? How much of it is like hyperbole or just like uh, you know, just kind of like uh, I don't know, just hyperbole? I guess would be the word. Like how much? How accurate is the book? Fair. I would say it's fairly, very accurate. Mm. It's very accurate. Meaning, he did come to me before the book was published, and he let me read pieces of it, chapters of it, mm. over the course of him completing the book. And he would say, this is too truthful. And my response to that was, we lived it. Why apologize for the life we lived? Right? So he just wrote as truthfully as he could and didn't edit it that much. He did take two characters and mix them into one character, you know, two ancillary, uh, ancillary, ancil, ancil, <laughs> ancillary, ancillary, I, I know what, I know, I know what you're trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, characters. Uh, I've, I'm a writer, so I'm really into into that. Who, who are those two people that were mixed into one? Uh, I forget now. It, it doesn't matter. There were two uh, extra characters that just got mixed together into one character uh. in order to simplify the story. Nothing changed other than simplifications, changing of, of uh, their names to uh, you know protect their identity. And many people weren't concerned with their identity having to be protected. I wasn't one. Chapter one, meet mystery. I've gone by mystery ever since. So many of the other characters in the book are proud to have played a part in that story. Um, I, there are, actually, I think, because I've quizzed mystery quite a lot over the years of this, and there are there are things that are not in the book that are right. not in it. So the book's real, but there are things that are not in the book that have been withheld because they're unbelievable. Dexter, what are some of those, uh, like the biggest things <laughs> you think need to be, that, that should be added to the story? I think cool stories with like Courtney Love opening the limo, get in, you know, uh, running through the, running through the boot camp, you know, that, I don't know I if you want to say, that's what I mean. It wasn't in the book. I guess it wasn't in the book. Exactly. Things happen that weren't in the book, but you get a good sense of what the lifestyle was like. You know, we were a bunch of geeks. That's who we are. We are all self-admitted geeks that went down to Hollywood, lived in the, the, in the Hollywood Hills right above Mel's Diner. What a beautiful location. And at nighttime, we would go play what we called the game. And the game had rules. The, the rule or the objective of the game was very simple, to open 12 sets a night, oh. to meet the best people that you could meet of those 12 sets and invite them back to the after hours party, back to Project Hollywood, to the mansion, where we would all do that and we'd have an after hours party like no other, just spontaneously created out of cold approach pickup alone. Quite fascinating how many people we brought back to the house and how eclectic the groups were. It all depended on how, uh, how a person would qualify a set to see how cool the sets, you know, would, that would come back were. Well, I think the cool just wouldn't is, bring yeah. anyone back. It, they would be exactly. totally qualified. That's what I'm getting at. You wouldn't, some guys, when they get qualified, started, they, bring, they, yeah, qualified. Yeah. No they fashion. just bring no fashion. anybody back, <laughs> right? But as you get more discerning, as you not only grow older, but wiser, you become more discerning and your qualification phase becomes much more real. You know, people can have red flags and three of them are enough to indicate a no, but many people forgo the red flags. What you are know, some of those they, red flags for you? Whew, there's a, quite a few red flags. Uh, I'm just going to get metaphorical. if. If uh, if she's rude to her friends, okay. right, quite likely she's going to be rude to you at some point, too. Yeah. Right? I agree. One red flag. You get three red flags, and you may be concerned with, is this someone I want to draw into my life or not? Mm -hmm. Right? 
And there's lots of red flag girls down in Hollywood. I've lived, there. I've lived in Hollywood. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Okay. Different, different, different time frames. So how did Project Hollywood or why did Project Hollywood ultimately end? Well, I left before it ended. I was kicked out of the house. Right. Okay. As was written about in the book. Yeah, King. yeah. It's been a while. So so I, ended, yeah. I ended up taking my girlfriend, which her nickname was HB the One. Beautiful, beautiful young lady. Oh. And I brought her to Las Vegas and continued my adventures outside of that house. I brought the party with me. And so ultimately, I think what happened is there was no central leader of the, you know, of the family anymore. Uh, no one was taking the reins and tribal leader. There wasn't a tribal leader who was, you know, encouraging them to get out and go game, oh. go to the high value venues. Like at the time there was the standard lounge. I loved it. The standard lounge downtown loved it. Two standards. And oh. we'd go to these, these really classy places. And we'd meet beautiful women and in time, draw them back to Mel's diner for food and then up to our party pad. Did you guys go out to the Roosevelt? Was that a thing? Uh, back that's then? where I met Neil, Neil I'll, Strauss. Awesome. Yeah. I that's where I used to bring all my dates when I lived in LA. It was the Roosevelt. And then what I would do is, uh, cause you know how there's a Starbucks right there. So uh, this is when I was like broke as fuck. So I would I'd bring myself like some tea. And so the girl would be like, oh, are you having a drink? Like, oh, I'm just drinking tea, you know, maybe later. And then I can't be expected to pay for her cause I'm not ordering anything. And I'll be like, finally, when I was done with my tea and I built a lot of comfort, I'd be like, you know what? Actually, I am ready to have a drink here. Let's go back to uh, another place I know. And I'll just lead them straight up the hill to my place. So uh, yeah, Roosevelt did quite good for me. It was Roosevelt for anyone who's not familiar, has like seven bars. Some of them are like, have exclusive parties and it's a fucking crazy place uh but that yes. brings up okay. that brings up too when you're talking about drinks and doing it on the cheap when you're like a student and whatever yeah. uh, or money's low i remember what i did as a student and i was this is when i first started out but i still use it today because it works if it works why change the song right they still get up dancing so what i do is i go to the bar i grab on the way to the bar an empty drink glass right mm -hmm. and i get to the bar and i make like i make a noise getting at the bar I put my drink down if they look i engage or i give them a little nudge like this they look over and i go oh, I, I, I hide my drink like this and i go i can get my own don't worry i can get my own like this mm -hmm. and it just it's just intriguing for them and they're like i can get sometimes they offer you a drink i know that's pr practically unheard of in a lot of people are going to think that's unheard of especially in america and oh, if so you're from uh, i've seen that. russia or somewhere but it works because it flipping the script on them and they don't know what's coming from and sometimes they go yeah what do you want and you don't order what you want you just say hey you pick maybe a shot or a shot and then you do the old shot where you switch hands and do a shot but it just encourages them to put a deposit down upon you. Once they start putting deposits down on you, they want to claim the prize at the end. Otherwise, the deposit is wasted. So that's what I'm doing, you know, just an early deposit. Just like if you say to a girl, hold this. She's, she, by holding it, she's depositing in you subconsciously. But it also reminds me of what Mystery does. And if we're mm -hmm. in an exotic dance club, he orders a cup of coffee with a long straw. Do you want to continue? <laughs> that really oh. messes with them. Do you want to dance? I can't. That that way I get to say when asked the question, would you like a table dance? I'll say, well, I'm drinking a coffee right now. Mm. A coffee inside of a strip club, of a strip club too, yeah. in Las Vegas. Yeah. You know? Uh, and they're but, very yeah. bemused by it. They're looking at it again. What? And a big straw in it. And obviously, mystery can do the most unbelievable magic you've ever seen with a straw. So, uh -huh. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I know, I know that about mystery. Yeah, he's like a legit magician. <laughs> uh, so I guess okay. So follow up question on that. So yeah, well, first of all, to comment on what you're saying, Dexter. Yeah, like that's kind of uh, what I would call building investment. And that, that's very much true. Yep. Uh, if the more investment you get from the girl, the more likely you know, things are to go down the way you want them to go down. Uh, my way of doing that would be to kind of uh, switch venues. So I'd be like, oh, let's go to this place. And then she follows me around, then I'll take her to this place. And then by the second or third place, I'd be like, 
All right, cool. Anyway, let's go to this other place. And I would just lead them straight to my place. At that point, you typically have so much investment. Well, uh, we all knows what, we know what happens on the third date, don't we? What's meant to happen on the third date. So different venues is a time distortion. Yeah. Now well, the, idea behind it, yeah, the idea behind it, I believe, uh, which I think is just a, a genius game plan, Alex, is to multiple venue loop. To, to go to multiple venues and thereby create multiple memories so that when she's in bed with you at the end of the night wondering, do I really know this guy? She'll be flooded with memories of being in different locations with you. It's a much more interesting pickup than to be in one location all night long with her. Yeah, for sure. So no, I definitely momentum. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. Although I would say personally, I don't know if it's like this for you guys, but the older I've gotten, the more lazy I've gotten in terms of how much work I'm willing to put. So now what I do is what I call Husky game. So I have a Siberian Husky. So I'll, uh, I'll message cool. the girl. Like I, I want to see like, okay, is it possible for me to cut out the bar? Oh, you've got, you, you're cheating. You've got chick crack. Know, you've got a Husky. <laughs> but what I would say is like, Hey, why don't we take my Husky for a oh, walk? And then maybe afterwards, uh, we can grab a drink, uh, have a glass of wine. So I kind of plant the seat. Then I'll take the girl for a walk. I'll kind of build up a lot of sexual tension. And then I'll just lead her up to my apartment. She's like, oh, I thought we were going out. I'm like, yeah, we're going to have a glass. What do you think we're going to do it? You think we're going to do it on the street like criminals? No, of course, we're going to have a glass of my romantic balcony. And then just take her up. That's like, I feel like the pinnacle of laziness for me right now. I don't know if it's like that for you guys. Like the older you've gone, just like the more you try the to find like, cuts. Yeah, to like uh, cut out the effort. You know, to, to be honest, I could have. I could have, but I don't think I'm lazy. I'm not a lazy pickup artist. I grind to find. I've been grinding for my next dream girl for quite some time now. And I'm just very discerning. And the women that I've met, while beautiful, for instance, a couple of weeks ago when Bexter and I went to Hollywood, they were beautiful, but they were not my compatible mate. And I have to just be honest with myself. I have them on Instagram. I look at their pictures and I think, will I end up seeing them again when I return to Hollywood? Perhaps as social butterflies, as friends, but they're not my soulmates, either of the, the two girls that I had a chance to, to meet in Hollywood. But you did supernova explode them together. Uh, yeah, I, I introduce them to each other. Let's see what happens. What, what does supernova explode mean? I mean, I think I have an idea, but maybe just explain for the Well, audience. no, the, the, the <laughs> idea is what you can say to a woman is we should take your social circle and my social circle and let them meet and supernova explode and we'll see who ends up with who. It's just a nice little game plan to, to, uh, give a reason to why you should see each other again beyond just boy girl dynamics. Uh -huh. Gotcha. So I have one more question about the book, book before we move off it. So in the book, kind of like um, Tyler's uh, is kind of created as an antagonist, sort of, right? You're the protagonist, he's the antagonist. Have you guys, like, since the book came out, have you guys been, like, mended fences? Are you guys cool now? Or is there still that kind of, like, unspoken rivalry? We have, of course, buried the hatchet. He was in his early 20s when he and his business partner at the time did some crazy things that again were written about in the book the game by my good buddy neil strauss and we saw each other a couple weeks ago in hollywood i went up to his place and we hung out and we went out to dinner so i enjoyed his company he's he's an intelligent man and he's found his voice Awesome. Yeah, I'm glad you guys made offenses. So kind of moving off that then, you both have been in the pickup scene for a while, especially you, Mystery. How's the pickup scene, how's, has the PUA community in general changed from Project Hollywood to what it is now? Well, a lot of, of the social media has convinced people that online is the way to go when it comes to meeting women. But the real truth is, and I know this because I'm at the real parties, people don't miss you if you're not there, uh, right? So yeah. being on a computer and attempting to type the right keys in order to affect some sort of sexual adventure in your life is preventing you from getting to the party. The parties are there. 
you should have seen these parties in the hills. We've got to several of them. Ridiculous beauty. You would like to draw a starlet into your life? Go to one of these parties, right? But you have to actually have the, the excuses set aside so that you can call yourself up and with no apology, get to the venue that's called grind to find. It's logistics, handling the logistics. If it's raining, some people will say, oh, it's raining. I'm not going out. Well, guess what? You didn't get to the party again. Every night there's a party in every city around the world. There are venues that are glorious. This very second, well, we're three men huddling for warmth on the <laughs> internet right now. What we could be doing is getting out to the party. You know, in my case, I'm with my daughter in Spain. She just got her braces tightened. So, you know, I'm taken care of right now. But you two guys, what are you doing? I was at the party. I was at the bar. I came back for this, and I've got an LTR from Finland arriving soon. Oh, dear, fair, enough, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Me, I, I just mostly work nowadays. I don't. Uh, I have a girlfriend. I've been dating her for four years. I'm not really like that's you know that's, girls all the time here and there, but not, reason uh, enough to stay inside. Of course, it's only when you're lonely should you decide to not let any excuse prevent you from getting to the actual real world party. That's where you're going to meet your next dream girl. Not on. No, for sure. And I think you're 100% correct. I remember when I used to live in LA, I used to live in Koreatown. And, uh, <laughs> for anyone who's not familiar with LA, it's it's not a walk to Hollywood. And I would take like a series of trains to get to Hollywood because uh, I didn't have a car and there was no Uber back then. Uh, so yeah, I definitely agree with what you're saying. But I guess my question was more about like PUA scene in jail. For example, I know there's been a big switch from like when you were kind of uh, – doing the project hollywood thing from indirect game to direct game also another observation i personally have is i feel like the pia community used to be much more tight-knit now it feels like it's kind of divided it's just like different factions no one not a lot of people really talk to each other whereas i feel like it used to be kind of much more centralized and i i think it used to be uh a more helpful space i don't i think there's better information out now but i think that the community was just more tight-knit so i guess I was too many marketers these days that's the problem <laughs> very true i do agree with everyone you to help everyone there wasn't a gain in it that's that's true and, there's, and there's also, uh -huh. also there's the fact that uh each individual company is niche marketing so they're taking a specific school of thought and making it their own right now the truth is all the schools of thought can be made your own you know it's not direct versus indirect it's both it's not day game versus night game it's both and who's the person, by the way, who created the list of verses? Me. <laughs> I do both sides. I don't do one versus the other. Day game versus night day and night game. The yeah, sun doesn't you. change your game. No, I, I agree with everything you're saying. I just mean from like more of like a 10,000 foot overview perspective, because again, you're someone mm -hmm. who's been in the pickup scene for a very long time, much before I was even in high school. Like just kind of like your observations of how you feel the community has changed or shifted, if at all, which I think there definitely has, like from, you know, in the last 20 years, let's just say, because a lot of people do feel like the pickup community has changed. I got into the pickup community about 10 years ago and during, and I feel like it's changed during those 10 years. So I'm kind of curious to hear your perspective and you as well, Baxter, about like what changes you're seeing in terms of the community. Well, so. there's, there's always going to be a top dog. Everyone's vying for top dog. You know, top dog can be taken away from you by another guy who becomes the top dog. But in my case, you can't take away first. I'm the first to teach infield boot camps. That's my thought. Okay. Bexer, do you have any thoughts on like how the community has changed in your opinion in the last like 10, 20 years? I think it's just that there's a lot more stuff to sift through to find the gold, you know, That's where true. before most of it was gold. It was just like this literally worked for me. You'd have, you'd have good forums out there. You'd have mystery lounge. Uh, you'd have um, the LSS London seduction society. They don't exist for more. That's a wealth of knowledge just disappeared. Unless anyone downloaded it on a PDF, please send it our way. But uh, <laughs> but uh, I heard they exist. I heard that your all everything you ever wrote on that and Tyler as well is downloaded somewhere. I think mm -hmm. I had it at one point. But um, but I think it that was the heart and soul that lost. And what we want to do is bring that heart and soul back. That's why we're doing the run again. 
We're doing runner podcast. We're coming back bigger. We didn't need to come back. We had, you know, word of mouth, repeat clients. People would just know to look for us. So um, now we've decided to come back and sort of get the community back in spirit again. And we were, when we were traveling the world, we met so many pickup companies. It was unbelievable. Who knew there were five pickup companies in Peru? Who knew that? So, uh, you know, we've been putting them on the straight and narrow because a lot of the fractions were warring. And mm -hmm. I say Peru again, they were literally fighting each other. Mm. And this is how we met them. We're walking down the street. We've gone away to Peru. We're like, no one's going to recognize here. No one's going to come out. We can truly hide. We were with our girls at the time, weren't we? We had, yeah, we, yeah. And uh, so uh, what happened is this bus goes by and I hear, Mr. E! Mr. E from this bus. The bus halts in the middle of this busy road. These guys run out and start like going, oh, we want to do a pickup seminar with you. We want to chat to you. And then all of a sudden this other group come from somewhere else and they come in and they were like, oh. So it's like a fan smash. But these were warring factors, and we found out there were even more. And if they see each other on site, they fight. Really? But, Is that fucking yeah, serious in yeah. Peru? In That's America, it's more of like you just ignore yeah, each other. No. Yeah, exactly. It's proper serious. There's and, a respect uh, amongst pickup artists, though. You know, yeah. when I meet a pickup artist in field, it's there's a respect there. Or at least I'm bringing out the best in others because, you know, you get on Conan O'Brien a couple of times. I'll say that again. You get on Conan O'Brien a couple of times and they treat you differently. They respect you at the very least. So uh, it's generally been exceedingly kind. This is the exception to the rule in Baxter's story, FYI. Yeah, yeah. But my point being is we were going around trying to get everyone to be united and not against each other. So we did that for like 12 years or more. We, you know, we did South America. We did like we did all of Europe like five times over. So we, we were yeah. all over the place, you know, yeah, and, uh, oh, sorry, and but with that, within 12 hours, the next day, they'd put on an event for us that was packed out. There were people like 300 people that couldn't get in. We spent longer doing autographs at the end and having photos than the actual talk was. And this is Peru where we went to hide. So pickup is everywhere. Not everyone admits that they do it. You know, not everyone's going to say, going to write a testimonial in case someone finds out because everyone's so paranoid, um, which shouldn't be the case, right? Because, you know, if you do a course, no one's ever going to find out. You know, they barely know who half the teachers are in the real world, right? Only men will know that. So, um, so pickups like everywhere. So I think it's spread bigger. It's, it's less underground and it's more overground. Mm -hmm. But I think that a bit of the heart and soul is lost and people are just trying to outdo each other. And no, that's I'm... not the, how it is. It's your wingman. You should, you know, have your fellow wingman. When we meet people that we're off, you know, that have said weird things about us and they meet us in real life, they're really nice. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. we end up gaming with them. And at the end they go, oh, I got it completely wrong. I didn't know. Yeah. No, so, I, I agree with you. But 99% of the time it's lovely. I'm just saying. People from the... Thank you. People from the uh, who have seen the pickup artists think that I'm a badass. And I'm really kind when you meet me. I love meeting people. So it's very easy to meet me, you know, especially a person known for being social. But the show had made me. Uh, appear right, Mr. A little Real bad. quick, drop your home address for, so people know where to go. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just saying, drop your You're real address, social, you know. drop your home address. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, have a party over here. Uh, no, yeah, I, it's, the, it's the standard lounge, 8 p.m. The, the standard lounge. Just <laughs> that's that's my home address. No, I, I do agree with what you're saying, Dexter. I do agree that it's become more fractured. And kind of, even though I have many criticisms of RSD, what I do like that they really did was the RSD inner circle communities. And that's how I met a lot of my wingmen and my close friends. And I do, I do wish there was like a centralized place where like, all the pickup artists could like, even though they have different ideas, could talk and there could be like a, some kind of a centralized community where everyone can come and chat and like, okay, yeah, we have philosophical differences. We disagree about, you know, openers or whatever the fuck it is, but we could still like chat in each other. And unfortunately, I feel like there used to be a somewhat centralized place. It was like a series of forums. Then it was like the RSD inner circles. And now it's just like all fractured. And yeah. Well, we do have one. Go ahead. We go have ahead. one on the school app, S-K-L-L-O. It's called Attraction yeah. Unleashed. S K O O L. 
school. The school app. It's an app yeah. or and a website. And Being then and then on that you search for Attraction Unleashed, and that's that's our forum. Mm-hmm. And it's like, a a place, it's like a it's like a place guys can use to like meet other wingmen in the area. Everything is very yeah. healthy. A okay. couple of thousand people and growing. It's not been. It's been around for about eight, seven months, eight months. Okay. And uh, it's it's like the new mystery lounge. You can put it that way. It's the place okay. to be. That's awesome. And can, can you can you drop the name again? And also a Discord. We're doing a Discord. It's made, but we've not advertised it yet. So we'll let you know. Can you drop the name of the app one more time? Yes, it's school S K O O L okay. school. And then it's Attraction Unleashed. Scroll. Okay. Awesome. I'll put that in the description at the end. Uh, okay. So here's, here, here's another big debate in the pickup community. And I personally made my feelings on this debate very publicly clear, but uh, I don't want to poison the well. I just want to hear your guys' authentic answers on this. So debate is cold approach versus dating apps versus social circle. That's a, it's a constant debate that happens. And again, I'm not going to, I'll give you my thoughts at the end, but I'm curious what you guys think uh between this the whole topic of what's better cold approach dating apps or social circle dating apps to me respectfully are watered down saturated and are excuses to why you're not getting to the party they're time wasters in many ways is it possible yes it's possible to find love on the internet but is it probable no it's not so when you're done playing with the games, you're still going to have to talk to the women you meet. So if you get a bunch of, of uh, single dates with girls online, only to never see them a second time, that's an abysmal failure. You're failing, right? Th those are two profiles that like each other. So it's, it's not two people that like each other. It's two profiles that like each other. It's different. But at least you get a meetup. And if you fail at that meetup, then you do that enough times, you realize you need a skill set. You need a social skill set to actually attract the women that like your profile. You know, you have to meet these women. So I'd rather do that in real life personally. Now, for the other two, you've got uh, what are the other two? There's, uh, there's social circle versus cold approach. Okay. Uh, both of them are in uh, both fall under cold approach as far as i'm concerned within the five levels of game there are five levels of game i'm going to go through them very quickly okay sure go ahead the first level is opening groups level zero game is opening single sets they're very rare two-thirds of all approach scenarios are the three sets so we're talking about level one game opening groups next is merging sets forward and backwards merging sets so you can build social proof and create more memories with other people. Next is allowing last night to assist you in this night's successes by inviting the girls out again, mm. right? That's the next level of game. Some people are pissed off at the guy who has four girls with them at the club and he has none, right? And he looks at the four girls and he wonders, what? why does this guy have all the girls and I don't? And the reason is he did the work, son. This is his day two. He brought the girls with him for crying out loud. He, he already met these girls on individual occasions and talked them all into coming out tonight. He did the work. Don't be pissed off at men who do the work. Next up is allowing last month's successes to assist you in this month's successes. Level four game is called social circle game. It's all a part of pickup still, right? Mm -hmm. Of cold approach pickup. Because you're picking them all up individually and then bringing them all out 30 days later on a barbecue 2 p.m. on a Sunday, who shows up? Only the people that you've met and maybe their friends. And then level five game is hot game or celeb game or Instagram game nowadays. That all falls under hot game. So to me, there is no real difference between level one game and level five game other than the man did the work. You know, he worked for his month. He did three sets uh, or, or 12 sets a night, getting three numbers of his choosing per night, getting a dozen people in a week. So at the end of a month, he can have up to four dozen people appearing at his barbecue. That's a man who's done the work. That's what social circle games are all about. Mm. Okay, Dexter, before I come to you, I do want to respond to what Mystery said, because you did say a lot, some of which I agree with, some of which I disagree with. So respectively, respectfully, the I disagree with the first part of what you said. 
which is that you're not likely to meet a girl from online dating. If you just look at like surveys and data, okay. about 35% of people meet through online dating. Me personally, my girlfriend, I met on Bumble, the girlfriend before that, well, the girlfriend before that was cold approach, but the girlfriend before that was Tinder. The girlfriend before that was, I think also Tinder. So I've been in five serious okay. relationships. Well, Eric's got, Eric's got a one meet, one close, end of completed Tinder story. Do you want to tell yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, I'm, sure. I'd love I to hear it. I met a girl off Tinder and we dated for two years. But I only met one girl off Tinder. It's the experiment ever. Was that by choice or is that just because you were not able to meet more uh, girls? Either? Well, then I got busy meeting real women you know, and oh. not having to swipe one picture at a time. What I'd rather do is create a face, you know, with some dials and then find the nearest matches to that face. So I'm choosing my beauty rather than sifting through all these women that are uh, largely offending my senses and i don't like playing that game i i would rather uh doll myself up and take my best wingman dexter and go to a hollywood hills party and meet some real women and enjoy their company i'd rather hang out with girls than hang out on a computer by myself i'm sorry oh no i think i think that's totally fair yeah uh, for sure you know? i'm just curious have you ever heard of the app raya not yet Okay, so I think, first of all, you would be one of the few people who would be, have an easy time getting on there. So Raya is a very exclusive dating app. So it's not like mm. you just create an account. You have to be approved. It took me about a year to get in. I had to have How do I spell it? R -I -A. <laughs> it's just four, four letters, Raya. Uh, R -A -Y -A. R -A -Y -A. Raya. It's for celebs. It's, well, I'm not a celeb, I got on, but I also know other people who are not celebs, but it's very exclusive. You need to have people testify you. The good thing about this app is twofold. Number one, 50-50 ratio, so it's not a sausage fest. Number two, pretty much all the girls on there are hot. Uh, I haven't seen a single fat chick on there. Now, fortunately, because I did a video on the app, they perma-banned me, which is fair, but uh, as long as you don't make a video on them, you know, it's a really good tool. I didn't really give a shit because I have a girlfriend, but... I think that would be much more up your alley just in terms of what you're describing. But Dexter, so what's your take on the uh, debate about social circle versus cold approach versus uh, on dating apps? Well, we call, I mean, listen, you can play all the games at once. You can play, there's five levels to the game and there's level zero, which is day game, the one set direct. And then you've got minus one, which is dating apps. Minus one can be counterproductive to the novice. Right, because he's going to be wasting a lot of time where the expert can go in field and get something within four to seven hours. So it's all you know quicker, depending on what sort of type of bar it is. But <laughs> if you're doing this, it could it could take a week, it could take two weeks, it could take a month to get someone out on a date, and then you still got to game them. So I might as well do the game in the club, and also when I get to the date, I'm on the back foot anyway because she's accepted me. No, 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 no. I don't get blown out. I go in field and I don't, and I do my thing. Yeah, well, as on a dating app, they've got the power, and I want the power. I will. Hey, I man. hope. I hope. I hope we get to hang out one day because I could totally change your perspective on dating apps of just with some of my. Hey, I, oh, I've, I've, I, I dabble now and then. I come in and out, spend on cities, I do a bit of like pre-work pipelining and so on. You know, I dabble now and then, and I'm very successful on it. But I only use it as bonus rounds. Remember, play all the levels at once. You can play hot game and you can play minus one. But make sure you're playing cold approach one to five as well, you know. Don't just be playing minus one stuck at home, you know, doing a Macaulay Culkin home alone, right? Otherwise, that's just sad. Also, go out and do your thing. And when you're on the toilet or in the taxi on the way there, play your level minus one. I do, I, do, I, do, I do generally agree with the essence of what you're saying. I do think you should do all three. Uh, I think they're very uh, – what's the term? Um, uh, they, well, all together is quite lucrative, isn't it? Lucrative, mm -hmm. yeah. I think the term is um, synergistic. That's the term, synergistic. I think synergistic, they're quite synergistic. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I, I do agree with what Mr. E said earlier is that, like, if you're really awkward, right, you're still going to have to show up on the date. And then, like, at that point, like – so I do think there's a lot of merit to cold approach. I do think there's a lot more room for growth. What don't you do approach. cold approach though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. What you do? How often? Well, Not okay. So, he's in a well, no, because I still do for, business mode. Well, no, I mean, first of all, I have a one-way open relationship, so I can still like hook up with other girls. Sure, sure. But uh, mm -hmm. I don't. 
I typically don't really care enough about it. But no, I do it for content all the time. So I just literally filmed a cold approach video like uh, a week and a half ago. I'm doing street interviews like four or five days a week where I have to like actually like, because if you want to get a good response from a girl, you kind of have to flirt with her a little bit. You kind of get her, make her comfortable. So a lot of those same pr principles apply. So I'm still like very, very active. Is like, it day game or is it uh, not a night game? What? Is that um, the game or? I, I'll do both. Like sometimes I do them like at 6 p.m. Sometimes I'll do them at 1 a.m. But okay. are you doing it in a club or are you doing it? I, in... I don't go to I don't go to club. I just typically pick okay. up girls on the street. Yeah. Just working out what type what where you fit in on the whole. Oh thing, yeah, no, know? I've never been a big fan yeah. of clubs. Uh, yeah. But also to comment on what we you call said. night game. We call night game on the street gutter game. Gutter game. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like a slang you're... name for it, but it's been around. If for, you're dredging for long gutter. You? 15 for years, 18 years. Diamond. Got a game. Dude, you As guys got to come to Miami, man. 7 p.m., 8 p.m., you're going to see the hottest fucking chicks walking around here. Well, it's yeah, like, you know, when the club's empty out, and then that's got a game. Oh, uh, you're, you're yeah. out there. Well, I've always believed that, actually, a uh, street game is best to do around, like, 7 or 8 p.m., when girls are about to go out. So I don't actually recommend doing like cold approach street game at like 2 a.m. unless you have no other choice. Or oh, I, no, I, yeah, it's, it's that's last last attempt. That's what that is. <laughs> 7 p.m. you're going to get a much higher quality of girls and you get better responses. Yeah, yeah. At that so point, well. the girl hasn't been hit on like 50 times. So you're going to get her yeah. best face. She's not going to be as sweaty. She's not going to be as tired. Um, I want to comment on what you said about the five levels of game because that's, that's an interesting uh, framing, I guess. So here's kind of how I've thought about it. You can just tell me what you think about kind of uh, my framing. They're not odds with each other, just a different way of looking at it. I, I mm -hmm. saw it as like four levels, beginner, intermediate, advanced, and super advanced. So beginner is where you just don't know how to talk to girls. You're just awkward. Uh, you just have a really hard time getting late. Intermediate is when you learn how to talk to girls, but you can't calibrate your game. So you have like one style right and it works with a certain type of girl so for example if you you got the fuck boy style down you can only get the fuck girls right you can't really get the relationship girls stuff like that right advances when you can calibrate your game so obviously we all know you can't make it work with every girl but you can calibrate so you can make it work with different types of girls so you can when you're talking to a conservative girl you can adjust your game you can tone down the sexuality when you're talking to a girl who's very bratty you can be much more dominant micro calibration yeah micro super advanced game is kind of what you said you leverage your successes from the past to get late. So kind of, I call that referral pussy, right? So you fuck a girl really well, you're in a good, you're, you get in with her social circle and then she recommends her friends to you. So that's kind of how I've always looked at it. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on uh, that paradigm. Sounds good to me. You know, that was a, that was a lot, that was a long I don't know question. your uh, definition specifically, uh, <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, there's basic intermediate and advanced, you know, and then of course there's, there's master. Have you mastered it? You know, have you mastered pickup from meeting her to beginning a sexual relationship? Have you mastered courtship? You know, are you good at it? Good enough to trust that the very next set you open could very well become your next girlfriend. Mm. That's that. That is what I've seen demonstrated time and time again with with pickup artists around the world, uh, especially the ones uh, such as Bexter who make the woman laugh and smile all the way to the bedroom. You know, the best pickup artists in the world have a laugh track is what I've noted. So the that's what we, is we, we giggle ourselves uh, all the way to the bedroom. What do you guys think is, uh, to kind of touch on that, what do you think is like an additional skills that you need to, because there's, there's a, there's somewhat of a difference between just being able to get laid and being able to maintain a successful long-term relationship. Uh, obviously, if you want to have a successful long-term relationship, you need to know how to get laid, but what are some additional skills that you feel like uh, you need to know in order to actually like keep a girl around that are not taught in, they're not involved in actually picking the girl up in the first place. You mean to, to keep a relationship going to, to have a successful long-term relationship. Yeah. How long? I, think yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's arbitrary, I guess. I'll say three years. I'm five the years. wrong guy to ask. Because, about yeah, because we don't rate girls. We just say how many years we would like with options That's to renew. Great. I could I'm put two years what, in what, that. I could put four years in that. What, let's, let's, say two, in that. Let's, let's say two years. With option to renew. Okay. Option to renew, yeah. What do you, what do you think would be like some other skills that a guy would need to acquire to maintain? Well, it? it's we've we've dated many girls for that period of time so and longer so um 
I guess keeping the fun alive, but having really, really good, you know, rapport, commonality, connection, which is, you know, you doing your just grounding sequences, you doing your DHV stories, you getting to know her deep down, you know, stuff that is more personalized. You know, people say, tell us a DHV story. There's only so many that we can tell you because the rest of them, the rest of the hundreds are our lives. We can teach you how to create your own with spikes what instead are of just sequences? copy someone. Can you give me some examples of what are grounding sequences? Uh, a grounding sequence is a sequence of stories that ground your identity to her reality, starting with when you were a kid. So you simply say, when I was 12 years old, or in my case, I wanted to be a magician. And I go off into telling the first time I did a birthday party magic show. Then I go off into the first time I saw a pro magician and how it changed my life. Oh. And then I move forward to talking about the first time I performed on a stage and performed large scale illusion and on and on until today. So oh. you're grounding. For instance, let's say you're a CEO for a Fortune 500 company. If you if you say to the girl, I'm a CEO, she doesn't know what that necessarily represents lifestyle wise, other oh. than maybe there's money involved. Also, if you say you're a marketer, that sounds like you work at a grocery store. It doesn't mean you're a millionaire marketer. Usually marketer means I'm a millionaire marketer. You know, that's what I what you do is you market. So you're gonna have money. Uh, but they don't know that. It sounds like, you know, so, something that they're they're not uh, correlated to. They don't understand. So what you do is you start by saying, well, when I was a kid or when I was a teenager, I wanted to start a company and I started it I, on the kitchen table beside my mother's fridge. And you tell that story about the first time you hired your your cousin to be your secretary and how hiring family members wasn't a good idea at the time you thought it was wow. and then you tell the next story and the next story and it's about 25 minutes worth of storytelling that conveys your actual life of who you were as a kid what you wanted to become and how you got there to who you are today and then after you've grounded yourself to her you then ask her to ground herself to you by asking her the right questions such as when you were uh you you were born in a certain city when did you first move so you start getting a sense of her movements on earth you know and you get a whole grounding sequence from her she will feel like she's invested in you uh you will be interested in her by asking her questions that ground her to you oh. so i think grounding the grounding sequence both ways you know boy to girl and girl to boy is a very important thing to do in in deep comfort in mid game. Uh. I mean, you've reminded me of two of mine, but I can yeah. tell you one quickly if you want yeah, an yeah. example. Okay, so uh, I've always, in my mind, I'd say to go, in my mind, I've always been into business. I've been a bit of an entrepreneur. And what I did is uh, when I was eight, I used to have a tattoo in company. And she's like, what? A tattooing company? Yeah, in the toilets. So I had a list of all these tattoos I could draw. I was a very good drawer when I was young. And they were normally like swords in skulls, sword with snake around it, you know, with colors and stuff. And I'd do it with a pen, just a pen. I wouldn't be tattooing. I'd just be drawing it on. It would last for three days if they didn't wash. Normally these kids didn't. And, uh, and in the corner of the toilet, I'd have my racket. And I got so much people's pocket monies. People had my tattoos everywhere. So this lasted a couple of weeks and there was queues outside the toilets. And I, I hired my friend at the time who was the best drawer in the class to draw my tattoos on people in the next toilet cubicle. And, and I take 50 percent of the money. And anyway, I got caught. Eventually, my mum got called in and said, your son's in trouble. And she says, why? He's got a tattoo in company he's got a tattoo in a uh, industry going on in the toilets people can't even use the toilet that's how yeah. i found out i don't but know the about the like san sanitization stuck. the sanitization element of that but it is a funny hey story. when you're eight man when yeah, you're yeah. eight 
but uh, that's the story just in, intrigues the, the girl. And then, you know, like, that's why. Ever since, I've just, you know, got my fingers in many pies. I got you. I like well, one, one, we're in a weird thing you and I have in common, Mr. I also used to be super into magic. Not a lot of my community knows that. And oh, really? uh, I used to do magic tricks. Yeah, I used to put on shows for my parents when I or my, they're my extended family when I was like 12. And then one day, someone stole all my magic tricks. And I got so pissed off, I never did magic again. Uh, oh. It was like all my best tricks just went missing. I'm like, fuck, because oh. they're collected from all across the country. Well, I think you should get back to it. Yeah, yeah. renew it. Get your yeah. old tricks. Get back. a renewed, a renewed yeah, love for magic because it's wonderful uh, in world class pickup. You know, whatever language they speak, it doesn't matter. Magic transcends language. Oh. Yep. It's, it's a beautiful art form. I absolutely love it. No cards, no, no tricks, just pure magic, such as telekinetics. That works great in field. Moving what is, objects. What is telekinetics? Moving, ob oh, moving, moving objects. That's right. Uh, Mentalism. Quite important quite impressed by uh, mentalism and, and telekinetics. Uh, absolutely adore magic. Awesome. So I use it in virtually every set, by the way. You know, I don't need to. I've done it without successfully, but I enjoy magic and I love I love putting smiles on people's faces and they freak out. You did it on the show, didn't you? You went in jeans and t-shirt and you didn't use magic on the That's right. TV show. That's right. To prove that episode. The peacock. It's not about peacocking. You can wear nothing, you know, just the regular jeans and a t-shirt and still pick up. It's just more fun and you get a uh, higher perceived value for peacocking, right? Mm. There's lots of reasons to peacock, to individualize, to stand out. I got you. Let me run, let me run through a su few super chats because uh, people have been <laughs> dying to get these questions answered. So, mystery, thank you for what you've done. Three three M model still works in twenty twenty three. If anyone knows someone in Barcelona, send them to mystery. Thank you, Baxter. So, uh, just a guy showing support. Uh, okay, here we have a question. Question for mystery, dude. You're unfairly criticized by the red pill. They say that you don't hold frame, but in reality, you took frame to a whole new level. Why do you think people say game doesn't work? Uh, he's asking. I guess yeah. Why why does why do you think game doesn't work? I think the people who are saying that yeah, yeah, have yeah. tried. You know, they, it's so easy to come up with excuses and to exercise your excuse making your, your excuse muscles uh, to make them bigger. And this sounds like an excuse for why they don't get to the party. You know, mm. has this guy been to the party? You know, I don't know. I don't know. Game personally. doesn't work. Why go? Why go to the party? I game think. I think. I think he believes game works. I think he's asking, why do you think that some people make that claim? Uh, because they didn't get to the party. And they're the type of people who don't realize how wonderful parties are, especially oh. the ones we go to. When you, when you say party, are you talking, talking kind of hyperbolically? You mean like hanging out with people, cool people? You mean actual like – I a... mean literally the party. There's house oh, parties in Hollywood Hills, and there's after parties after every club. So you go to the club, you get invited to the after party, you get there, and you get to invite some of the girls that you met at the club to the after party to get to know them better. Do you have any tips right. for guys, for example, who, uh, like, let's just say they just moved to LA, they don't know anyone, they go to a club. Any tips how, how they can get invited to the after party? Well, you be cool. I think you go to the yeah. VIP clubs. You, you've you already gained girls, so you want to be high value, have hot girls with you, as many as you've done. So you've got to put the, the weeks or the months in, depending on how, how social you are. You go out four nights a week, five nights a week, get them girls, bring them to the VIP clubs. Within that VIP clubs, bring them to a table. That table will bring you to the nightclub, uh, bring you to the Hollywood party. Oh, that's right. So, game knows game. So if you've got some game... The, the other guys that have game that that know where the after party is, they'll invite you. You're you can't go empty-handed, though. So basically, yeah, I agree, I do agree with that. Like, if you have a bunch of girls around you, you'll probably get invited to whatever. Yeah. So here's a if here's you've a, got a bit of this, then you're good. So here's a here's a little bit of a different question uh, from a guy who's also a magician. Who are Mystery's favorite magicians and magic influences? Does Mystery still believe in the seven-hour rule, or has it changed? Uh, so yeah, so I guess you can start off with the magic magician and magic influences. 
Uh, magic influences, no doubt. David Copperfield influenced me. And there are some new magicians on uh, America's Got Talent and Britain's Got Talent that have impressed me. Uh, so those are the new magicians. Just seek out AGT or BGT magicians and all of them. You know, even the 11-year-old girl who was a magician impressed me with some wonderful magic. So, yeah, I just, I love magic and I love theater and I love the mix of the two specifically. Uh, as for the seven hour rule, it's a general rule. It's a nice general rule to live by. You know, if you compromise her comfort by going less than four hours from meet to beginning a sexual relationship, uh, you know, if you're trying to get the girl in two hours, it's premature. You quite likely are going to get last minute resistance. You're quite likely going to get buyer's remorse. You know, errors will prop up. You certainly uh, compromise seeing her a second time or a third time or starting a long-term relationship with her if you're under four hours. If you're over 10 hours, then you're falling into the let's just be friends zone. And you don't want that either. So seven hours is a good general rule that dozens upon dozens of pickup artists around the world have agreed, you know, it, backwards rationalizing is about right. Um, if you've got good logistics, you can do it in four hours. If you've got uh, regular logistics, you know, meaning your house is 20 minutes away from the pickup location or from the comfort building location, then you've got extra driving time, you know? So that's a good comfort building location, sitting in a car with a girl as you're on your way from one venue to another. But it adds up and like billing, billing the way a lawyer would by the minute, you add up how many minutes you've been with the girl. And if you're around seven hours, generally she'll seduce you by then. Oh. If you've done everything right. Respectfully, that would be probably one of the few things I disagree with you on. For me, it's more of like the two hour rule uh but that's unfortunate because the, there goes the love story there goes the art of the love story if you're just you trying to bang chicks quick 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 right then your agenda is changing the love story from kissing her at the end of the movie to kissing her to the, uh, near the beginning of the movie two different love stories and that's not a hallmark love story to me I, yeah i, I mean I, my, my whole thing is i never want to hold my I just wanted long-term success. Like for me, I would say with the girlfriend I have now, uh, it was probably like four hours, two days solo. The girlfriend before that, probably three hours. Uh, I don't know. I mean, again, different styles. Yeah, like three, four different hours. And I bet the logistics were good. Yeah. I always have good logistics. That's yeah. why it's four hours. <laughs> yeah, that's that's four hours being generous. Literally like, the, the difference. Average, for the that's average the guy, for the average set, I'm sure you've also played long game or at least attempted it. You know where you've known a girl more than 10 hours a few and times, you're getting yeah. nothing from it yeah <laughs> I, I i too and so that changes you know that that raises the average uh it's just a good general rule around seven hours if you compromise the seven hour rule you may be compromising her comfort levels anyway it's not up to us it's up to her so if she wants to bed you in two hours or in 10 hours you have to leave that up to her okay fair enough um yeah. Here's the next question. So, uh, Black Pillars say, "Oh, I appreciate the super chat, Zone Boy." Black Pillars, Alex. Say, I wanted to say something quickly about magic. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, okay. Eric's being quite humble. He used to hang out. Uh, well, David Copperfield and him were like buddies, wingmen for a while. Really? Okay. But he, yeah. So, if he definitely knows all the magic now, that's awesome. So here's the question from Zumboy. Black pillars say looks are almost 100% what decides your success with women. Uh, Mystery, don't you think you have an unfair advantage of being good looking and being 6'5"? What about Thanks. the below average 40 Indian guy? <laughs> I like how people always go to the extremes. But I, I think the, the spirit of the question is like, uh, what if a guy is, for example, not good looking and he's like 5'3 or he's whatever? Uh, do you think that, uh, I don't know, do you think it's a little different then for that guy? I don't know. I'm not a four foot eight Indian. All I can do is talk to a four foot eight Indian and ask them. Now, as an example, we've got Neil Strauss, who is not a tall man. Mm. And, you know, he's balding, but he shaves his head. So he's bald, which is sexy. Balding's not a choice, but bald is. Mm. 
he's a short man and he seems to be doing quite well with the ladies mm. so that's just an example you know if you need to wear platform shoes and raise yourself with the illusion of three extra inches to get you three extra inches of woman go do that it's a it's a magic trick mm. but is it necessary? I don't believe so. I think that personality goes a long way. If a woman loves you, she'll give her body to you no matter who you are. If she loves you. I, I agree with you. And I also, just... if you're thinking about that, your, your inner game is dented because you're like, I am. And you're just thinking about this worry all the time of you in your mind it's negative. And, you, you know, as long as you have your structure, your material delivery down, and you practice that with volume and velocity and maybe you need an instant feedback from someone that knows a bit better now and then you're gonna win this game there's no like we've seen unbelievable feats happen with our students that uh, that you're like wow it's real sometimes can, we can get a reality the, check ourselves can you share one of your craziest like transformation stories with one of your students that you've had well, or it's like, holy if fuck you want to go but i've got one off the top oh, of my go head for it, yeah. Okay. So it was this, yeah. uh, this was a while back and it was a guy that was very overweight. He was in his fifties and he had a very strong Northern Ireland accent. So <laughs> Margaret Thatcher, like very angry and, uh, and he had warts, like he had big, like, <laughs> I guess warts, I don't know, growths on his face, warts. Yeah. And, uh, but he was game. He was game for it. Like, you know, he was still like, I like smile and he smile on the end and, is that and I said exactly what to say and he went in and it was day game and he went up and there was a big show going on in Covent Garden in the West End which is a very busy tourist area and there's always a guy doing a show and trying to get you know money for it but these acts are amazing and he was being a bit crazy and I just I said I'll go in and say oh I'm sorry about my dad he's always like this you know she laughs oh it's good that you laugh it means you've got a sense of humor to go of your looks but what else have you got going for you you know, and then qualifying and so on. And then I said, now leader and say, listen, it's firstly work. And there was a bit more banter he knew to say from what we taught him. You know, is it better to be wanted or needed by someone? So da, da, da. And then I said, now instant date her to the coffee shop. Say, it's firstly work talking to you. Have you got five minutes for an espresso? Or what do you normally drink? And then bang, and then put the arm out and go. Mate, lead, put the arm out and lead. So... He does all that, and it, within the seven minutes of or ten minutes of banter, he's walking my way, and he walks by. He goes like, like that. So I just text him, you know, carry this on, and you know how to bounce and so on. Anyway, on the, two days later, he comes in for the end bit, which at the time we just did ten minutes of like some sexual, not techniques, but just like what you should do, you know, like wash yourself and do all this, and you know maybe do this and so yeah. on, and. Um, he got and, and he arrived and we were like how was it he goes it was amazing she was like i was a, she said i was his uh, soulmate and she's taller than him like this and about 25 years younger and i remember when she passed me i was with the other students and one of them went i would and i was like i would as well she was stunning you know boots short skirt tall dark hair south american and then um and what happened in the end and he goes yeah we're soulmates we've been in the hotel for two days Oh. And I'm like, great. He goes, and I said, why are you back? And he goes, I've just come back for the sexual techniques part. <laughs> so I thought that was hilarious. Anyway, two years down the line, sends me a message, married, got a kid. So, and that was about 10 years from now or nine, eight years from now, something like that. Yeah. So I should follow it up. But yeah, taller than him. He was fat. He was older. You could hardly understand his accent. It was, wasn't a pretty one welts on his face uh, dressed shite but went in with a big smile arms out jolly jolly used said what was he he was meant to say didn't deviate mm. and uh followed the plan and executed and now has a lovely wife and a kid or kids i guess did he marry that girl or was it a different he girl? married her oh shit. okay that's fucking he nuts. married her damn okay so i that's when i was like what even i was like whoa that is that is pretty epic. Even I was humbled by that. That that is an epic story. It Let works. Me, Game is real. No, I, I dude, you don't have to convince me, man. I hundred percent agree. I've also oh, seen, I know. I've seen crazy things as well. I can well. tell my, you're a gamer. I can tell. Uh, my craziest thing is I had a client who had cerebral palsy, so he literally couldn't talk like uh, barely at all. 
And he he wasn't a virgin. He was just gay and lay from prostitutes. And he was able to get a girlfriend uh, through a dating app, actually, and awesome. they were together. And that's like for that guy, it's like dude, like cerebral palsy is a fucking tough disease to yeah, yeah. overcome. Like literally, when you can't communicate, there's someone, that's like, there's yeah, someone yeah. for everyone. There are angels for, with a lot of love to give out there. For, for most people, yeah, I do think there's some people though that are so toxic and bitter that no one's going to date them. Unless but that's a different toxic. story, though, isn't it? Uh, you're not like, ready when you're when you're your own self damager, you know. Yeah. Let me let me rephrase this question. But, but we've had people, and I'm sure you have. We've had lots of people with like autism and Aspergers and so on. And I think it really helps. It really brings out their social side. And I remember this one guy. He had Aspergers, and uh, uh, one of our coaches, John, uh, he actually trained him for a while, and he ca- and he said he did t- more in than uh, ten years of um, psychiatrists you did in a weekend because mm. and it was like a life changer and now they're me he's right john helped him write a book on it and now he teaches other people with asperger's and they're making it into a movie that's awesome man so, so that's me, like what a roller coaster let, let mm. me rephrase this question in terms of what i think yeah, might be still to so um what percentage of a role we all agree game is is huge right but what percentage of your success with women would you say is your looks and what percentage of it would you say is your game or social skills like for me for example i would say that i think your success is like 60 70 percent game and maybe 30 percent your looks where do you guys stand on that like what would you say is like the the breakdown if we're going to just make up some arbitrary percentages i'd say 90 percent is game and 10% is looks. Okay. What about you, Baxter? What about you, Baxter? I think looks and just get your foot in the door, but then there's a lot to live up to, but it doesn't really always work. But women are not drawn the same way. So I think as long as you're doing an extremely good cold approach, the sky's the limit on that one. So, yeah. Uh, as I said, the story before, you never can tell. You just never can tell. Yeah. You should never presume. You don't know that person. Stop mind reading. Only mystery's good at that. Uh-huh. It's not good. You can have a real crappy night all night long, and in the last five minutes, change your life by meeting the right person. That is very, very true. I've had uh, bad streaks where I'm just striking out, and then I actually what, what kind of what I've noticed would happen with me is like I would go out and I would like if I got unlucky I would strike out and it would make me frustrated and then sometimes mm-hmm. I would just be like ah oh, fuck it whatever nothing's gonna happen tonight anyway and when I would accept that yeah then I would meet a girl and then I would want to pull in her uh so sometimes I, I do know a lot of it's like a mental battle let me actually lead into this question then letting like, go of your outcome when you let go of your outcome because they can smell it you can then have the courage to tease and play and say things that aren't necessarily attractive, but they're entertaining, right? It's having the courage to entertain, to to try to make her laugh. Even negging, the result of a neg is laughter. If you're negging and they're not laughing, then maybe you're not negging. Maybe you're insulting. That is that is the neg of a neg. It's nuanced. It's an insult. You know? Yeah, I've always felt like the whole neg thing got taken way off context by like feminists and stuff like that. Like negging essentially is teasing, right? Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 flirting. It's flirting. It's flirting. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of like people outside the PUA space under misunderstood negging, and they thought it means like you literally insult the girl, like "Hey, you're fat, bitch." Like that's what I think a lot of people outside. Uh, the they were just negging the neg. Yeah, no, yeah, negging, trying to neg you. Neg. They called it an insult when it is not. Yeah. Here's no, a I, good example. I, Paul Rudd caught, parodied mystery in what was it? It's awesome as well. Uh, in it? Wayne Days. It, uh, Wayne Days. You can see it on YouTube. No and uh, he's, he's mystery. It it's brilliant. Yeah. He plays Alien. What's he called on it? Alias. Alias. That's it. Interesting. So, what yeah. Let, let me run through a few more questions that the audience really wants answered. So, uh, yeah. so this is a question I think more for mystery. Uh, uh, what do you think are your five best tunes that became well-known PUA? So, for example, the examples he gave like Owen Cook, Neil Strauss, Todd, etc. So, who would you say are, like your best five students that are like pe- that someone people would know? To be honest, I wouldn't know how to answer that. I don't have my list in front of me. I'm so sorry. No, it's all good. Then we can move on to the next question. 
What, what I have done is I, I'm aware that I have influenced the lives of quite a few people. Some of them continue to work and play in this pickup artist industry, in this sphere. And uh, many of the competitors that exist in this space are former students of mine. So, you know, they're, they're, some are more famous than others. And, uh, and, you know, I love and miss. That reminds my... me, where's Mihao these days? Yeah, where's Mihao, man? Have you heard it, Alex? Have you heard where Mihao is? You know Mihao? No. Oh, wow. Um, Times have changed. Hey, he's a pickup artist uh, out of San Diego. He lived in Project and Hollywood. And a very successful with one as well. And a very successful one. Uh, you know, self-professed geek. And uh, just ladies feel really comfortable with him. And Lived uh, in the hills, had a Bentley. He became L.A. cool. You know? That's where the where the underdog wins. Epic. That's me. Yeah. So here's here's also another question. Um, what's your opinion on how age affects the game? I guess it's uh, for both of you. How does age affect the game if it's harder now than during the two thousands? Oh no, I feel like it's easier now. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm fifty two now, and these wisdom lines they never slowed me down. Okay, so you feel like it's actually easier than ever. Well, I have accrued higher value or at least higher perceived value my magic is better i've got more money in my wallet i've got uh, uh some wisdom that shows and uh you add all that together and you've got yourself a high valued male competing in the same venues that uh, that the young cats are in random question uh if the game was ever turned to a movie which actor would you like to play you well, I heard James Franco was going to play me. You know, that was written about in the Hollywood Reporter. I heard that too, but I don't know and how then, much. And that then was. that, well, that movie got scuttled. And it was posted that a lot of places. Project got scuttled. So, do you know why? Uh, I suspect it had something to do with the, uh, you know, James Franco got into trouble with some hot water oh, in yeah. Hollywood. Yeah, uh, I don't know the details of that, but I think that had something to do with it. So, uh, you know, the movie is still pending to be made. Now, one of Neil Strauss's other books, The Dirt, got made into a movie on Netflix, a Netflix original. And Netflix originals are really high production value. Yeah. So that was a great movie. I went to the Netflix theater with Neil in Hollywood to see it a week before it came out. It was a real privilege. So with one, that one said, you sh maybe the game will still be made. Who knows? I, I think Johnny Depp would be the ideal choice to play you. That's a good one, yeah. No, they'll have uh, some young version of me. You know, back when I was 25 years old, they'll pick some 25-year-old oh, geek, you know, as Johnny, geeky as you could get. Johnny Depp in a time machine. Uh, Dexter, what, what do you think? What, same question oh, for you. Oh, man. Oh, there was something I was going to say. Oh, yeah, there's another thing you people should watch. One night a pickup, but it's every hour of like a 10 hour night or 12 hour night. And it's called Mixology. And By Eric, Ryan do you wanna... Productions. Yep. Ryan Seacrest was over at it's pick up. It's pickup related. It's it's got pickup terminology it's in it. They say, Are you trying to neg me in it? Wingman yep, is a guy that looks like Tyler Durden in it. Yeah, and there's there's a character named Ron who happens to be English, who happens to be a ladies' man. Oh. So uh, it looks like the writers of Mixology looked to the community for some inspiration. That was cool. Do you did you have any input at all at the James Franco thing, or was that totally done like outside of your oh, control? No. Just some. I, I had read that the Hollywood Reporter had reported that that movie was coming out and that was many years ago and it never did. It should. If, if it's if it's written right and it's played right, it could be a really successful movie. But it, it can't be watered down. It would have to be like a really like good replica of the book and it would have to have good actors playing each person. You can't have like a shitty actor playing you or something like that. As long as it's fun because we live a life of fun. Well, it seems like you have a really good attitude, man. You're, it seems like you're really, really positive. 
I'm in good spirits. I'm with my daughter. She's she's uh, getting her braces done here in in Spain, mm. and you know I had been apart from my children due to a border uh, issue with the mm. UK for a while, mm. and that was a dreadful experience. So now that that's over and I'm allowed back in, uh, just like that, uh, I'm I'm getting to spend time with my kids again. And that's magical for me. So yeah, I'm on cloud nine right now. Let me, let me build on that question uh, a little bit. So let's say like there's there's a lot of guys in the in the in just in the community in general. The guys like I wouldn't even say bigger community guys who are struggling to get girls, and some of them become very bitter and you know frustrated. And you know you could say rightfully so, not rightfully so. But at the end of the day, they're really frustrated. How would you recommend like let's say one of those is your student? How would you help them snap out of that mindset and kind of get to a place where they're positive, where they're optimistic? Yeah, you, you can't bring your baggage to the club, son. You have to drop all your baggage and open your next set. First set on the left when you get to the venue. So what we do is we get them out to the venue and we get them opening the first few sets. We call them warm-up sets. Gets you into a talkative state. And the number one emotional state that I recommend guys get into is not a confident state, but rather a talkative state, like the one I'm in right now. We've got ourselves into talkative states, and that way I can utilize that to convey my personality, which is the whole point of pickup. You convey your personality, and she chooses whether she wants to hang out with you longer or not based on that personality conveyance. Bix, so what are your thoughts on that? Like, let's say you have a guy who's uh, just like super negative and he's frustrated. He's had. Oh, I've had. <laughs> five years, yeah, yeah. So five years uh, of rejection. Uh, you know, well, just... I mean, I, I've been learning NLP since I was 19. So I got into NLP and pickup at the same time. So, um, you know, I, I, I could do some reframes, some patterning and anchoring and so on. But of course, at some time, you've got to treat people how what type of person they are. Some people you need to be bold and direct. Some people you got to pander to their needs and molly coddle them. Some people, so one of my tactics is I just go and open the set. I'm going to open the set and then say, oh, have you met my friend? Mm. The old good how I met your mother. Uh, have you met Fred? Have you met Ted? You know, bring mm. them in or, or um, DHV them first. AI accomplishment introduction. Your friend, bring him in. He chats, he gets more comfortable with it and then slowly back away and leave him to control the set and see how he handles it. Do that a few times. It only takes one good set to change your life and your mood. So I just need that one good set to kick him off. I can anchor that and he's good to go for the rest of the night. Of the five keys, the fifth key is instant feedback. Getting instant feedback in field by a coach is indispensable. The, the number one most uh, powerful advice I could give anyone in, in learning about pickup is to seek a mentor. Oh. Seek a mentor. That is going to save you years of pain. You're going to let go of all those errors that you keep repeatedly doing because the guys get to watch you in field perform pickups. And if there are sticking points, you'll be called out on them after the set's over. So you get feedback, instant feedback to help you with the very next set. By the end of three nights of doing that on our boot camp, for instance, there is change work being made. Uh -huh. let, let me build on that. It's not osmosis, but, but it is about 70, 80, 90, whatever. We don't know the numbers, but most guys, it will help them by watching us you know, in field, it will help them and bringing them in as yeah, well. Just watch us but game. the others, so there is a small amount that go, oh, I can never do that. And they freak out because, so you have to first get them to go in first, that type of character before they see what we can do. Otherwise they get a bit too uh, mind screwed, but normally can, everyone's fine from it. Osmosis yeah. does work. Let me build a bit on what mystery said. How would you, you, you've been around this community for ages, both of you guys, you've, met a lot of the coaches and whatever if you're like a guy who's just you're saying get a mentor i agree with that but like how do you discern whether the pickup coach or the mentor that you're uh 
you're gonna work with is the real deal or just another marketer like what are what are some things you would recommend people to look for in general when there's choosing no school people? like the old school <laughs> okay <laughs> let's, let's let's build on that a little bit more well i mean the structure's there the material's there you know there's no faults i mean what you need someone that can show you that can talk the talk and walk the walk so someone that can go yeah. in show you what they're doing bring you in give you as mystery said instant feedback is invaluable and if someone really knows what they're doing and they've been doing it more, longer than they haven't in life then uh that's their norm like they they're living it they're living it they're good they're in the uh, matrix of that good pickup doesn't look like pickup it looks conversational in nature. It looks like you're in rapport with them. It looks like you came with with her and her friends to the venue, you know? So that's what a boot camp affords. It affords you the chance to run sets yourself in a set as a group of people and get some instant feedback to progress you throughout the night so you get longer and longer sets where you actually can accomplish something within the set you know some escalation of some sort perhaps getting a phone number exchange is is a a rung on the ladder of compliance right uh these are important things no i agree i guess i think maybe i should rephrase the question like uh obviously yes you guys boot camp is good shit, but in general like let's just say that for whatever reason he doesn't have he can't afford you guys or whatever he can't he's, you're wrong place wrong time like what should someone look for when deciding to hire a coach like for example one of the things i always say is proof of concept right so you want to you know there should be some videos of them doing cold approach stuff like that right what are some other things like you would advise people to look for when deciding to work with a coach well uh, how many masters have they made how yeah. many masters We've made a few masters. Mystery's made a lot of masters. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people, I'd say fifth, there's a good a good percentage of this community that, that are made through us or masters that made masters. And so this like, goes um, on a photocopy of a photocopy yeah, the, of a photocopy. The idea behind that is you are not a master until you can teach it to someone else so that they too can become a master and perhaps be better than you. You know, your students should oh, yeah. become better than you in time. Oh. You know, some of my former students have got loud mouths and boy, oh boy, can they talk now. And they're all over the Internet. Oh. Okay. What Fair one man can do, another can do. So let me pose to this question, interesting question. Are you guys familiar with Alan Roger Curry? Yes. Uh, I've never met him. Did he pass away? He did, unfortunately. Yeah, he did. I heard he passed away. I never met him. Uh, he had a, a certain cultural viewpoint. Uh, More about was, like his style of game. So his 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 style yeah. of game was like ultra direct, like just super duper, like even much more direct than me. Yeah. Like, what are your thoughts on just not him as a person, but just that style of game? Uh, I think it. You know, if it creeps out the girl, like if I, if I feel creeped out doing something, she's gonna feel creeped out by it quite likely. You know, uh -huh. so I don't like creeping girls out. That's my game plan is not to creep them out. You know, I'm thinking specifically the hand grabbing. A girl walks past you in a club and you grab her by the wrist. You know, don't grab a girl by the wrist as she walks past because she just pulls away and goes, what the fuck are you doing? Excuse my language. Was that Alan Roger Curry that that, uh, that promoted uh, that? Don't know, game. but we've seen that in, Ru in uh, uh, with Russian PUAs at least. I've oh, Russian that. PUAs, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen We've been everywhere. Time. We've seen all yeah. the PUAs. <laughs> it's what not to do. Because did he get the girl at the end? No. You know, I'm concerned with results at some point, too. Mm. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, well, I think, I just think, I just think if it's too direct, you can't do enough. There's so much more game in indirect. Uh, There's so mm -hmm. much more that you can do where like you're the, limiting yourself with direct. It's like, do you like, like me? I like you. Do you like me? It's real life like Tinder relationship, building a girlfriend. What about what it takes to build a girlfriend versus what it takes to have a one night stand? You're going to want to invest some more time in her. You want her to know how many are in your family. You have to tell her that at some point. You want to know how many are in her family, if she's the youngest, if she's the oldest. You know, has has any of her siblings passed away? 
Is their mother and father still here? What what real world uh, human uh, you know circle of life events did she have to endure? You know what commonalities do you share with her in that? All that has to be said at some point. That's some really deep meaning stuff. You know, it's all girlfriend building stuff. It's it's all about commonalities. But you throw that all out when you go for fast game, when you go for direct game, when you go for agenda driven game. All all the you know the juice of a love story goes out the window. You know. You mentioned and what that. Eric's doing and what Mystery's saying there as well is you're getting her to invest in her grounding stories back to you. So you're giving them, she's giving them back. The commonalities and the rapport is very powerful that, at that point. What You said something earlier, uh, Mystery, like I think it was about an hour ago, uh, how you will sometimes, uh, you, you'll go from sometimes doing direct game, to more direct or more indirect, what determines how direct you're going to be in interaction? Is it like a gut feeling? Is it your uh, just like kind of like your your years of experience? Like what determines? Or is there something like specific, tangible you can point out that will determine how direct or indirect you'll be in interaction? I can only go by ex by you know personal experience. So mm -hmm. generally, my sets are you know, for our social are public and social, but, you know, I did have a girlfriend that I met in Belgrade. Baxter, you were there for that. You remember this one yeah. where it ruined I, our tour. I'll tell you later why. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> that ruined our tour. I walked into a public gathering in Belgrade. Uh, and as I walked in, there was a two set. That's two mm -hmm. women that I had noticed and I smiled big on the end and uh, acknowledge them, but we were being ushered in. There were people behind me, so I had to move past. And about an hour later, I found myself in another set in a spirited debate with a, with a woman. Uh, and I got a tap on my shoulder. So I turn, and it was the two set from an hour earlier who had been watching me in a spirited debate with a woman. Uh -huh. So I had some social proof. I turned to her and said, you're going to have to fight for me and it's worth it. That was my opener line. And she proceeded to grab me and kiss me and take, take me away from, uh, from the set that I was in debate with. Oh. Right. And that woman ended up becoming my girlfriend for four months. So sometimes you have to let them win. Why, why, did, that ruin, <laughs> why did that ruin your trip? It sounds like a good story. Well, two things. One is before I forget, uh, uh, Mystery's got the unique ability of meeting a girl that night, and then he's living with her instantly, already in a house, living with her. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, why did I get a two bedroom Airbnb for a month, Eric? But yeah. <laughs> it's like, oops. But yeah, uh, we were on tour. Our tour was like six boot camps in a row for whatever six the months. The tour was whatever. called Mystery is Single Tour. So, like, he's really going to game. He's really going to go hardcore. Oh, okay. you know? No no, no shackles. Yeah. It was the first time we'd both been single together at the same time for, mm -hmm. like, seven years or something. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, even though it doesn't, you know, uh, you know, I'm open. And then, um, so we were in the second night of the first tour we were in. Where were we? Belgrade. 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 Saturday night. We're in the queue going into the club, even though it's two two venues a night. Blagged our way into some VIP VIP club. He's over the shoulder in the queue. Blah 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 blah. Takes about ten minutes to get in. That was the one that he turned into his girlfriend, living okay. with her that night, and then for the next four <laughs> months or something. Okay. So we had to change the name of the tour. Mystery is not single anymore. We just. You know, mystery will be in field again as normal. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm starting I'm starting to comprehend the uh, the issue. Kind of leads me into how how much time do you guys have? Because I have questions for days, but I want to like keep you guys. If you, I'm, have I'm good to go for. It's up to Eric. I'm good. The to only go. concern I have is uh, I'm in Getting Spain in right now, and I have to get my daughter to the airport tomorrow morning. Mm. 
that's my only concern. But let's keep going. I'm having fun. Okay, awesome. So I want to we'll as long as we can. Yeah, sure. Just whenever you guys need to bounce, just let me know. So leading into this, what is your craziest pickup story? Like the one that's like the most insane, most impressive. To kind of kick things off, I'll share mine. It was uh I had a date. I brought her to a bar, and Peter Dante. I don't know if you guys know who he is or not. He's like a C-list actor. He tried to cock block me, and he's a stand-up comedian, so he's a lot funnier than me. I'm pretty funny, but he's a lot funnier. And he came this this close to stealing my girl, uh, but he couldn't. And I wound up pulling her and sleeping with her. And then when I saw him a few days later, and I thought we could have a laugh about it, he just looked at me and said, "I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about." I walked away. But anyway, so that's probably one of my like top five craziest pickup stories. But I'm curious, what are yours? Like, what would you say is like your craziest shit that you're like, I can't believe this fucking happened. I can't believe this happened. Or just stands out to you as the most like impressive or most memorable. So sorry, I don't think I can answer it. Nothing's coming to mind. You know, it doesn't, have to, it doesn't have to be the best, just something where you're like, yo, this was fucking crazy, where you can laugh about with your friends and they're like, holy shit, I can't believe this happened. Hmm. I mean, you must have stories like that for days, mystery. I that's it. I have a I have a life of this. Where where would I begin? I really I don't know. I don't know. Well, I think the one the one that you can see online, because mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's just there's it too much. Uh, pick one like the HP the one. You can pick the girl that I met when we were in uh, Orange County that you hadn't seen for years, and she came back into your life. Sydney, you know these are all uh, supersets we call them, but we don't get them on film. But there is a superset on film, and the superset is when you picked up the Calvin Klein model. What was it on uh, oh, the CNN right. program live? I, I picked up a supermodel. Uh, on hidden camera on the discovery channel i had the cameras come out to a club and i met a supermodel which one the hot one and she became someone special in my life and that was aired on the discovery channel so so you can watch that somewhere where can yeah, people find that uh, it was a hidden uh, camera wasn't it yeah but i put it up on uh nostalgically i put it up on eric von markovic uh youtube channel Okay, so it's on the channel. Yeah, okay, it's on the channel. Check it out. There's lots of fun stuff there too that you could believe uh, it or not. If you put mystery up. PUA in or Baxter PUA, you're gonna find a whole lot of videos. And there is us talking to people all around the place. That's yeah. right. I'm also on in field lifestyle channel. I'm all up on those videos. Very That's easy to find. You just gotta Google it. Very easy yeah. to find. No, no, I know that. Bester, what's what's your craziest like fucking or one of your craziest pickup stories? Well, I mean, I was in a freeway relationship for two years, and one was a nineteen-year-old billionaire, a billionaire s, and the other one was uh, twenty-six or something. And I lived a, an amazing life for many years, going to clubs where uh, we'd go to these clubs, and I'd say, "Okay, this is our meeting point, and you've got fifteen minutes to go that way and find a hot girl. You've got fifteen minutes to go. I shouldn't be saying this, should I? And find a hot girl, and then I will find a hot girl. We all bring him here, and then we bring him back to the house." So we did that for years and years. So I think talk that was my best pickup, how, eating them. Talk a little bit about the beginning of that. How do you actually meet both? Well, of we those could people? talk about Candy, or maybe I should change names. But anyway, it's too late. <laughs> so, for, for <laughs> Sorry, the, gone. For the nineteen-year-old uh, billionaire s, like, how did you meet this chick? Like, give a little background story for that. Uh, I was in, I'm not going to say areas, let's just say I was yeah, in London. You know, and you can areas, just like the general, general I was actually branch. with an ex-girlfriend. I was with an ex-girlfriend. Uh, I won't say her name either, but let's call her Sarah. And I was with an ex-girlfriend and she, and she said, look, I want to come to your house beforehand and have a pre-party and then we'll go out and we'll go out to this area that goes on very late. And so it's not far from me either. So I was like, okay, then we'll go there and we'll come back and party here. But she introduced me to another girl who just put a bottle in my face. Like she heard me joking around. Like she said after she loved the way my attitude was, put a bottle of champagne in my, in front of my face, and which was full, and said, "We we've got ten minutes to drink this, and then we got to go." And apparently the party's at your house. So and then we all part. I was partying with like four girls back at, and one of us my ex, and one was the new girl, and two others, and uh, we just got on really, really well. And then we were dating for a while. We met this other couple. We all hung out. And then 
the other girl dumped that guy and then eric and i were doing it was doing a boot camp by this time in uh the top of a model a hugo boss's model headquarters we've got an airbnb above the top of it which was awesome in amsterdam and we were doing an event there but we also used to go there and live there for a month or two because it's just awesome to be there and we don't want to be in and out all the time and uh they they skype over to me and they're like got tape on their breasts and so on and like oh pigtails going on and all oh we've got a question for you oh do you want to be with us both and i'm like pretending to not go yeah <laughs> just like yeah okay sounds good sounds good and then they flew over and we all parted but yeah it just they they chose it you know sorry these two what girls we do like... is we want the chase we we are we we give the chase we don't want to be the chaser right there's two narratives right mystery so these two girls were friends with each other and they kind of came up to you at a party and they were like no no i i came uh, i had an ex-girlfriend and uh, then she had a good social circle there uh, and so I did i and then she introduced me to another girl and that girl once we all parted i, I arranged a date with her and i saw her that i just basically went to her house and uh and we started seeing each other and then we met another couple on just on a night out you know when you're a couple you meet other couples just start hanging out because that's why you know cut a mix sets are lucrative because no one talks to them and uh so uh then uh we the other girl you eric knows these girls very well like he knows that i'm talking about um they they skype me or zoo yeah skype at the time i think it was and they said oh we all want to be to get we'll be a freeway because she's dumped her boyfriend and i was like okay then let's let's just there yeah, why not let's try this and it was great i must admit it was lovely oh, okay. so and most girls i date are by anyway by the by they're by so uh it's, it's handy. I game with girls. Like, look, I can't hide from my name. You put Bexter in, I come up full page everywhere. So you, I can't hide. They're going to Google me. So I might as well own it. And it doesn't slow us down. People are so scared about like saying stuff. Women really want to go on a date with a pickup artist, with a dating coach, or whatever you want to call yourself. When they definitely want to do that. And that gives you at least 20 minutes to upload DHVs and, and attraction switches to their brain while you're on a date or whatever you're doing. I, I do agree with that. Yeah, it does work as an advantage if you can say like, yeah, I'm a dating coach. Uh, girls get really curious. And then they also, and I'm also at that point, start telling you their sexual slash dating issues. And they kind of automatically see you as an authority. It's like you're a doctor or something like that, which is interesting because I guess anyone can just say they're a dating coach without even being one. But yeah, it seems like... Uh, there's definitely an element of authority. That Especially if you're Caesar mm-hmm. of the dating world. Caesar of the dating world. <laughs> how often do you get recognized mystery by women specifically? Like, like you're, let's say you're walking around for three hours. How many girls will like recognize you or how many guys will recognize you? No, it's more I'm guys that recognize you than women. Uh, even though the show, the pickup artist on VH1 was designed for women, it is a reality show filled with guys after all. But a lot of men uh, gravitated to that show and they gravitate to the seduction community. So oh. it is mainly men. And how many? It all depends where I go. If I go to a nightclub environment, those are my people. Very different than if I'm going to just a mall. Oh. Okay. And it all depends which city, which country we're talking about. Because surprisingly, you know, the fame has hit in other countries besides America in canada it's it's worldwide it's the internet it was interesting that you said alex though because you thought sorry eric Karen. go ahead it was interesting actually you said you thought a uh, mystery had been on a hiatus for 10 years where like where some people do think that and when we went to the vip club before we uh, went to the hollywood hills parties we we met this particular this one guy that came he was so shocked he was like oh my god some people are shocked that you you're there and then what i found funny is because he was watching you after that you know walking around within 10 minutes you're controlling a whole table of girls with a couple of dudes on it and they were loving it as well and then i was like it's funny because i can't believe it i saw mystery and it was amazing and then 10 minutes later he's in field 
Uh, and it's like, yeah, that's what we do. You know? Yeah, no, I was. Uh, that's that's why I didn't bring it up during the podcast. I was under the impression that you guys were just spend the last like ten years like chilling and doing your own thing. I didn't know you guys were still like super active, very uh, active. Okay, okay, fair, fair enough. So it leads me to this question also. What's your favorite city for game? You've traveled all across the world. You've been pretty much everywhere. What's your, or at least your top three favorite cities? If I may give my top three, I love Helsinki. Something okay. I mentioned on another podcast, but it's a true yeah. thing. Helsinki, Helsinki School, I've been there, yeah. I love Kiev, or I did, that is, before, you know, shit <laughs> hit the fan there. Yeah. Uh, I love people from that city. So if they are tourists traveling, I'd like to meet them anywhere in the world. Beautiful women from the Ukraine. And there's also Moscow. Moscow is filled with beautiful, beautiful people. Uh, wow, wow. So you like Slavic women, essentially? like kind of like No, I like Hollywood hot. And the hottest girls in Hollywood are from moscow st petersburg kiev finland you know helsinki those are the hottest girls in hollywood okay uh what about we actually you? we're doing an event uh near the end of april 1st of may which is a vapu which is their biggest celebration and all the finnish people come right into helsinki and they party in a day everywhere there's like a million they, they're literally is a million and they're partying through the day and then on the on the nights they go to a nightclub and it is crazy it's like their new year's eve so we do that every single year without fail we do a boot camp there so it's great and we've had a lot of high level people come to that it's, helsinki it's, school it's i like spent about five days there and i was uh, definitely meeting quite a few girls what i noticed mm -hmm. about helsinki is that number one girls are super duper nice like you go mm -hmm. up to like a perfect 10 and she's like, oh, I have a boyfriend, but it's so nice of you to come up to me. How's your day going? How are you liking Finland? Like the girls are super nice. Even like the. Like yeah, the they're, they're, they're educated. They're yeah. educated. And what's your uh, boyfriend objection yeah. reply? Yeah. When, a girl, when a girl says, it really depends on the context, how much I want to bang her. Uh, typically what I'll do is if I'm really interested in her, I'll say, oh, cool. Are you guys going to get married? And the girl will be like, either she'll say yes, but most of the time she'll say, uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I'm like, oh, well, can't be really that serious then, right? So I'll kind of reframe it. But nowadays, I, now, yeah. nowadays I quickly, I typically avoid that because I just like, I don't know. I mm -hmm. just like, whatever. I'll just find a single girl. But I used to, yeah, I used to like do all that shit. And say, so I've got a goldfish, even better than that. And then stack forward. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. Your reply was just as good. Yeah, I like that. I'm glad you appreciate it. So, what, Dexter? What are your top three choices for cities to uh, for game? I've been. I used to live in Helsinki, so I, I'm biased now. I speak part Finnish, so you know okay. most 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 the love interests I've ever been had is uh, they're from Finland. So, uh, and then and then oh, again, Kiev was amazing. Odessa was great, which Odessa. is also Ukraine. Um, Moscow, but that's for advanced gamers. There's no point going if you're not advanced gaming. And um, St. Petersburg is really good. It's quite chilled. Mm -hmm. lot, it's more day gamey as well. So uh -huh. if you like day game, it's good. Good logistics. We Another had a place at the end of the street, that long street. I don't know if you've been St. Petersburg. No. But on, uh, on the end of the street, we had you go in and you had a cafe, which was also a bar and a shisha place with balconies you can see out in the main square. But this long um, the main street, and then the next floor was what was it like some sort of nightclubby thing, and then the top was our penthouse, mm -hmm. and it was just logistics were unbelievable. Oh, that's it. It was a cafe at the bottom as well, so you can get food that's and you go up and just work your way up in the same building doing the the bounces instead of going all the way to this next bar, all the way to this next place. You did it within one building, which is great. Yeah, yeah, my observation about Finland was that the guys there like just don't approach for shit. So girls are like really receptive because they just don't get approached in Finland, from what I've seen. Okay. I, I yeah, I, well, it depends. I, I mean, I tell you what, when they've had a drink, no. they're approaching everyone. That's for sure. The guys, yeah. they like a drink. Although my 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 These place Vikings. would be Colombia or Mexico. I like the Latinas, so I would definitely go with probably Medi Medellin. Colombia is probably one of my top five cities. Have you guys traveled? Uh, yeah. Oh, you're headed there? Oh, we yeah, haven't. Oh, yeah, we're heading there. Yeah. 
I thought we were going to say Brazil for a minute. Nice. When, when are you going to be there? Well, we were supposed we have, to go. We, we, yeah, yeah, we were supposed to go, but I got uh, allowed into the UK to visit my children. So I decided to do that instead. So I scuttled that project in lieu of hanging out with my kids. Yeah, Medellin is uh, awesome. So here's another question. It's an interesting. So question. do you feel? Do you, uh, this is our worry, right? Every we did put an event on there, and there was lots of interest. Mm. But most people, which made us shy away for a moment, most people were saying it's very mm -hmm. dangerous at the moment. Yeah, I've heard that. At the moment. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. So we I'm... thought, well, okay, we'll make we'll put it at the end of the year when things calm down a bit, and uh, do it then. Mm. But do you know what we've been everywhere we've been rio and everywhere we've been near the ghettos of parties and mexico where mysteries come and rescued me i was in a boot and i went to a party and mysteries come and rescued me because i put sat nav location on some rooftop party come and got me and you know we've had some wait crazy stories and we've never actually been that worried we've had police try and get us in mexico for stuff like trying to rob us basically we because they yeah. rob everyone there you know in tulum in tulum and uh you know we're not worried so when someone says columbia we're not worried but people are giving us their worries they're like yeah. oh we don't want to go I, there because we're scared is just making sure that the students are going to have an excellent adventure you exactly know, we, we don't want them worried venues per weekend uh, uh, per evening rather three venues either two or three, we have a third one as a backup. So if the first two venues aren't replete with beautiful women, we can always head to the third venue and we have three per night, two or three a night. You know, I, that's actually a game plan. When a guy goes out to a club with, you know, friends, plan two venues. Don't just plan to go there and spend all night. What if it sucks? You have to leave and find another venue. What if it's good? You can take the people with you to the next venue and it sweetens the pot. It's being social. It adds more memories to your timeline. If you guys say like one thing, you know, we're not, as, as Mr. was saying, we're not to come back to an old Fred uh, open loop. The day game, because you do day game a lot, right? Um, Alex? Well, is uh, that what you're saying though? For, con for just... content, yeah, I do a good amount of it. Yeah, right. So, uh, someone I trained and was great friends with and, and studied mystery extensively was Tom Torero. Have you heard of him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He unfortunately passed away, right? Yes. He did. Yes. Unfortunately, um, passed away and, uh, it was a good friend of ours and we did, we managed to do Russia and Moscow all together as a joint thing. And he would, we would all do day game together. There's video of it. Mystery's doing day game. Mystery's in field. You can see it all working great. And uh, I'm there and Tom's there. And then we were going tonight and Tom's in the nightclubs with us. So, you know, mm -hmm. when you're a high level PUA, you can do it all. You just got what you prefer to do. Oh. Yeah, if you decide so, to go to Medellin, let me know and I'll send you a voicemail with like details. I've been there. So, so my question is, you do go to the clubs if you have to at a push. You can... You can do it if we go to Medellin, for example. We can't go to Medellin and not go to a nightclub. Oh, I totally disagree. I, I've <laughs> been to Medellin many times. I've been to bars, but I've never been to a nightclub. I hate clubs. Uh, oh, right. yeah. bar, bar, bars. Bars. I mean bars yeah, and yeah, night, yeah. nightclubs is the same thing. I, 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 yeah, sure. I can do it. Uh, I mean, with Medellin, it's so easy. I'll typically either meet girls online or during the daytime as I'm like walking around. But management has brought all these hot girls for you in a nightclub in one room just so you don't what have to walk around the streets that? forever. Listen, it's, Mitty, Ian, there's so many hot Ian. girls everywhere. Okay, it's like, what's the difference between a thousand hot girls and a hundred? I'm girls? sold already. I was trying to get mystery there. <laughs> we should go, right? See, it's now no, you've been endorsed. It's good to go. It's, it's no more. Look, it's it's like right. it's no more dangerous than Mexico. There's dangerous areas. Uh, exactly. There's there's issues with prostitution, but if you go to the right places, uh, you stay successful in the right area. risk taker. Yeah, it's it's it's. I've never I've been there a million times. Never had an issue. I've had some friends who've had issues, but again, usually involves them kind of thinking with their dick rather than. With well, them being a bit yeah silly, yeah. not streetwise. Yeah, yeah. Um. So this is a this is an interesting question. So have you guys either one of you guys read the book The Setup by Dan Bilzerian? I have not, but I will. It's it's a. You really met him, Eric. You've you've been to his yeah, house. Yeah, of course. I've met Dan. Uh, 
he's an excellent host had dinner with him at his house in the hills the hollywood hills mansion with some eclectic friends yeah he was with michael there yeah mike certain was there that's right what, what are your thoughts on uh i guess because uh when i read the book he actually talked about pickup a lot more than i expected it seems like dan's actually quite familiar with the book the game didn't neil write the book N yeah neil wrote I, the i think what happened if i if i'm not mistaken uh neil and uh bilzerian were going to write a book together but oh, neil had right. neil i yeah, believe neil, had neil was out. supposed to be the editor i believe okay well, and that didn't happen, so we got another writer. Right. Uh, uh, yeah, but anyway, I think the whole premise is that, like, uh, he really heavily, he talks about how he started off doing pickup and how he got better cult approach, but eventually how he uh, transitioned to essentially an entirely social circle. And he talks a lot social about the, yeah. the power of social proof and, like, how having one girl there. Also, I'd be obviously, a huge factor is the, uh, the celeb factor. But even before that, again, if you take the book at face value, which I don't see any reason not to, uh, he talks about just the power of uh, pre-selection and like just how the, I guess he kind of makes it out to be that like the end goal is social circle game, which I can see the argument for Or it. celeb game. Or celeb game. That's you know, one up. Yeah, that's what he's playing. He's not playing social uh, circle. He's playing celeb yeah, game. He's playing celeb game. You know, if he's doing talk shows or podcasts, but uh, I'm sure he's playing all five levels of game. You know, all five. He knows how to talk to people. He's he's a, a social. Con he's a conversationalist. He's social. Uh -huh. Did you guys, when you hung out with him, did you guys ever like uh, do any sets? I didn't or... hang out with him. No, um, but yeah, just the people that were at at his dinner party, uh, an eclectic group of people, uh, men and women. Put it One this way, you need social circle game if, but that's what you work up in your city or if you're a traveler like us, a few cities like LA, Helsinki, London, you know, Toronto, we have a few, Barcelona, we have a few cities going on that we, you know, where we met, we've made our social circles, mm -hmm. but uh, you got going cold sometimes, son, you know, we're not yeah. all on TV and if you got going cold... <laughs> And that's like what less than one percent on TV, right? So most people on listening to this are going in cold. So you need to drop down in the city. We do a recce. We got one night. We meet cool people, and we build that social circle for when the students come. We, if we built one up quick enough, because it was a good night, then we we're going in hard with them. But we teach the students to be able to drop down in any city and make it happen, and then leave. Meet bittersweet, as Mystery says. Because you make close friends and then you got to leave them at the end of boot camp. Gotcha. So here's another interesting question. What skills? So have do both skill sets. Have both skill sets. That's the answer to that. Yeah, I know. Be I an all-round gamer. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I think that, yeah, like 99.999% of people are not going to be celebrities. Because uh, if everyone could be a celebrity, then there would be no such thing as a celebrity, right? Uh, so here's an interesting question. Ask what skills take someone from advanced to mastery. Say that again. I don't know the answer what? to that. It I makes see. no sense. What separates a guy who's good from a guy who's amazing when it comes to pickup? Laugh the track. How, how do you how do you get to the next five level? Ds? Sorry, what? Grounding stories. Instant value demonstrations. Can you give an Any example? One of a number of, of things can improve your game. You know, can you, can you give an like example of an skills. instant value demonstration? Uh sure. Here, watch this. I'll show you something cool. Okay. Check this out. Got a pen. Watch now. Mm -hmm. Gone. Oh Ready. shit. What's here? What's right there? Look right I there. I think it's, it's in the left hand. Keep watching. Okay. Power and the glory. Keep okay. Keep watching. Keep watching. Got a ring here. Watch here. Keep watching. Now. That's a two hand oh, vanish. Isn't that fun? You're you're good, man. Although, for anyone not who's a, not a skilled for anyone who's not a skilled magician, what would be like an example of an instant value demonstration? Here, watch this. Watch this. Right back. I mean, you're 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 good at magic, man. You're fucking really good. There's no denying that. Uh, Cheers. That's a. And that's if a, it's in person, 
there's a whole new story going on. Alex, the, the magic isn't in performing magic. It's in holding and captivating a group. If a woman can see me holding court with a group of people, and it, you don't have to do magic. You can do storytelling as long as you're captivating them within the story. Mm. And she sees that social proof, your value goes through the roof. That's the power. I, if I do magic to one girl, that's not nearly as impressive as if she watches me do magic to a whole group of people. That's the magic. And, and plus, I think everyone, everyone and their mother should learn at least one piece of magic. You know, one day you're going to have grandchildren and you're going to be the cool granddad that shows some magic. Mm. Start now to get good. So here's here's a follow-up question to that. There's like a term in the pickup community that's called like a dancing monkey. So how do you avoid mm -hmm. like I think I came up with it? Oh, okay. How do you avoid entering that territory? Uh well, for magic, I generally don't open with it mm. because that seems a little try hard. It'll when they answer when they ask one of the autoresponder questions, you know, where you're from, what's your name, uh, what do you do? If they ask me, what do I do? I can say, do you want me to tell you or show you? Mm. Much more interesting than saying I'm a, I'm a magician, mm. right? So they introduce the magic to the set rather than me doing it. Mm. Okay. I kind of prefer that. So don't open with it. Okay. Fair enough. What are your thoughts on that? Baxter, you're muted again. We can't hear you. Baxter, you're muted. Sorry. Also, when you can uh, read their mind and levitate stuff, <laughs> they want to sit down with you for hours. That, that. that would be quite cool. Uh, all right. So here, here's a different question. I'm just going to try to run through these so we can get everyone's questions answered. What? So this is from Mr. B Day Game. What parts of Mystery Method do you think are still relevant today and what parts should be updated? The structure is still the same. In the book, The Mystery Method, How to Get Beautiful Women into Bed, oh. I overview a structure in pickup. But since then, we have evolved, developed, and evolved additional keys to proficient pickup. So I, as a part of Mystery 2.0, convey the five keys to proficient pickup. The first is structure. The second is material. To fill the structure, you need things to say. And that changes for everybody who plays the game. That's what individualizes you. You don't have to run the same material. You just have to do it in the same order. You know, you have to, you have to do it phase by phase. When you're in the second phase, she's in the second phase. When you're in the third phase of pickup, she's in the third phase of pickup, etc. Those are her phases, not yours. But you can meet the objectives of each of the phases with your very own personalized material. So material is the second key. It goes a long way. The third key is delivery, the delivery of that material. And for some people, they say delivery is everything. You know, any one key is going to improve your chances dramatically. If you learn structure and you bring the structure into field with you so you know what phase you're in when you're in it, that's going to improve your game dramatically. So is having material, knowing what to say before you say it. That reduces approach anxiety dramatically when you know what your opener is. And when you have your delivery down, it all starts coming together. Then you get enough volume and velocity. That's the fourth key. You know, volume is the number of sets you do in a night. Velocity is the amount of time you waffle between sets so that you harness the night properly and, you know, harness your time wisely. Use your time wisely. And lastly, the fifth key is instant feedback. If you go out with a coach and he gets to watch you do sets, he gets to give you some course correction and feedback for the very next set, you're going to get really good. And there is a secret to the keys, but you only find out on my training course. <laughs> do, you still, um, do you still recommend the Skype approach? I remember a while back that was like your thing is like, get, don't get the girl's number, get the girl's Skype. Have you, do you still kind of believe well, in that or have you updated your perspective? It's WhatsApp no, it, video call. It's WhatsApp video call. I mean, uh, okay. girls are answering their WhatsApps. They're answering okay. video calls. So yeah. if they're not answering it to you, then you gamed wrong. Uh, you know, not you, <laughs> but to you. Uh, the, yeah. the brand, uh, then you're gaming wrong. 
you know? But if you game correctly and you video phone her, she should pick up like she does with her friends. Yeah, obviously you can do like a courtesy. Hey, I'm just going to ring you real quick. False time constraint. Yep. I've only got a minute. I know you're busy, but I'm busier. I minimize um, text. I'll call you in five. Yeah, That's all I'll text. I'll call you in five. Oh. And then call them. If they don't answer, move on. Yeah, WhatsApp is good. I think definitely a lot better than Skype because, uh, yeah, not too many people use that. Convenience anymore. now, yeah. Agreed, agreed, agreed. WhatsApp's great, and so is Instagram for at least the soft close. You know, mm -hmm. 10 minutes into your set, you should soft close by saying, are you Instagram friendly? She says, sure. You get her Instagram, and then you keep gaming. If you lose her before you get her contact information on WhatsApp, at least you have her Instagram. At least you, you asked. But mm. when you do ask for Instagram, don't just say thank you and leave. Say right. thank you, stick around. You know, why ask if you can go on a date with a girl someday when you're out with her now? Just instant yeah. data. Yeah, that's true. Um, here's another question. You still use the line, see the girl fight outside? Nope. Not I, I've used it. Yeah. yeah. But I've modified it. I, it. I, I put a bit of sexual humor in it. Yeah. Do you mind? So, yeah. 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 So it gets to the point where, hey, do you see the girls fighting outside? And they're like, no, no, no. And like, oh, no, no. And you go, yeah, yeah it was it was crazy. Like, they, they literally smash through the door. They're on the street pulling each other's tops. And then, you know, one pulled the top down and it came down like a saggy baggy booby from National Geographic. And it was crazy. But all of a sudden, there was a weird bit where the other girl just flipped her over, put her legs on top of her, looked her in the eye, looked down at her lips. And at that time, I'm triangle gazing the girl, by the way. Oh. Looked at her lips and said, I must. And then just kissed her. What do you think? That was so crazy. Would you ever be that spontaneous and adventurous right now? interesting <laughs> and then i've done that and uh, but and that's me that's i'm a bit cheeky chappy with my approach you know there's a bit of sexual vibe what i'm doing but it's Mystery. still indirect do, do you like nowadays do you have like a few like um like just like openers that you stick to or do you do like spontaneous like on the spot openers when i'm nervous i'll stick to my tried and true that's what i'll do whether it's the Google Earth opener or the Titanic opener or the Ocean's Eleven opener. I just know what my opener is. I know what I'm going to say before I say it. Those are my top three if I'm defaulting to you know, my fears. I'm nervous. If she's a 10, you've got a default because you're yeah. going if, if you're gonna try and wing it on new material that's not tested, that's just not logical, is it? Go with what works. But generally speaking, you'll try to like come up with something on the spot. It's just only if you like can't think of no. anything. No, 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 no. That's freestyling. You know, no. it's like saying to a girl, "I like your shoes." Well, that's the "I like your shoes" opener, and she says, "Thanks, my boyfriend bought them for me," and you're blown out. So rather than do anything that is spontaneous and not very clever or creative because it's in the now, she has long hair, so you say, "Hey, you have really nice hair." She's heard it before. It's not interesting. You're you're boring if you if you just run obvious gambits. But if you use gambits where you're using words that are rarely used, for instance, someone says, "How are you?" You can answer, "Fine, thanks. How are you?" Boring. Or you could say, "Magical." It's much more memorable. It's it's more rarely used. So our gambits want to be. Uh, we want unique gambits. The one that I use, Ocean's Eleven, is where I say, nothing can wreck this day. Absolutely nothing can wreck this day. That's my opener. My friends and I, we conducted a caper, a project. And now that it's over, we are celebrating like the end of Ocean's Eleven. Nothing can wreck this day. It's a statement opener. It's oh. a part of the school of thought of indirect. It's the indirect school of thought. I'm initiating the chat without telegraphing interest in the girl. And the only reason why I'm talking to them is because I'm in a talkative state and I'm talking to the next person on to my left. You know, nothing can wreck this day. I'm so grateful. It's a great. It's very hard to get blown out as well when you go indirect. Mm -hmm. 
what what I like to do for if it's at a bar or night game, like at any kind of venue, is I'll just go in and I'll say, I'll try to make strong eye contact first. I'll go in and say, Hey, I'm Alex. I'll just introduce myself. That's it. I find that works quite well because you're not going too direct. If you see yourself. All- yeah. Yeah, yeah. If, well, the group would probably probably would be a bit different unless the girls like kind of separated from the group. Um, what mm-hmm. do you? So that what is that? Is that international or in America? Well, I mean, like if I'm in a country where they don't speak English, I'm gonna have to say "Hola, me llamo Alejandro." Like I'm gonna have to modify it if they don't speak English. No, like if I'm if I'm in Colombia, actually, my opener will be like, "Hey, do you speak English or something like that?" Like, yeah, I want to sure. find out what their That's English cute. level is first before I continue right there's no point that they can't understand you uh but i think around europe yeah, people opener i use i use hey guys quick question and then you're off into your opener right but you open by saying hey guys even if they're all girls you say hey guys oh one one thought i had though is uh what i recommend guys do is when they're fantasizing in their head about what do i say to a woman to make her attracted to me Take a step back from that fantasy because it doesn't very uh, very much help you in field when you have to approach groups. So fantasize instead of walking up to a girl by herself and fantasize about opening up a group of three or four people and initiating the chat with the, the whole group and captivating the group as an audience. That is what the mission is. The mission is group theory, not single approach theory. Uh, and also, it's the adjacent set, right, Eric? Hottest girls. People are think group. we're going for the first set, but it's yeah. Not- oh, yeah. That that idea. That's a great game plan. Then uh, I found that you know I I have been known to have dated some beautiful women, and how did I do it? I got them from the second set. I would open up a set of anybody of a group. I would build social proof. And then I would open adjacent sets that had given proximity to me because of the social proof. So I would then open the second set and get the hotter girl. That is how I got the most beautiful women that I've had in my life. I did two sets and I merged them. So if you see a really hot girl, you won't approach the hot girl first. You'll you'll approach like the less hot girl and then merge her with a really hot girl. Set. I won't even approach the set yet. I'll approach an adjacent group, build okay. some social proof, and then invite the girl that I want to into the set and say, hey, let me introduce you to some new friends I made and introdu- do introductions. It's very fun to do. It's, you know, merging sets is both basic and advanced. It's basic in that you have to do it tonight, you know, if you're going to build social proof. But it's advanced and that you have to be able to open more than one set. But it's what, great um, because it's still the jealousy plot line. If you want two girls chasing you and fighting for you, you have to meet them both first. You got to do the work. Mm. What uh okay, so let's say you go to a bar and there's just one hot girl there and like everything else is sausage fest, right? It's just like a bunch of dudes and one hot girl sitting by herself. Kind of a no. uh, not likely to happen, but let's just say hypothetical. So what if you're just doing just like a single set and that's the girl you're going for? What would change in your strategy? Okay, well, I'd end up introducing her to the men. Oh, really? Yeah, of course. And then, you know, demonstrating my value and befriending the guys. I think that would be much easier than trying to pin her off instantly and get her away from any other guys. No, no, sorry, you misunderstood me. I, I'm, I'm assuming yeah. that the girls, like the, the guys are different. The girl's just by herself. Yeah, no, I'd merge sets. It's boring yeah. for me and a girl. Well, what I, well, I think what Eric's trying to say is in the field, if you're a, a pickup artist, you've got the art side of it, not just you're doing pickup, but you're doing pickup artistry. You wield the set. You lord the set. You become the tribal yeah. leader. You become the best in the set where the guys don't want to compete with you. If a new girl comes in, they'll probably throw her on you. But that girl is in awe of you now, and no man does that. It's Remember, the best pickup is counterintuitive. Mm-hmm. Interesting. What What about if you're walking around during the daytime? Would you That's still- why if an AMOG comes in, Eric keeps them in. Mm-hmm. It keeps them in, keeps them in until he blows them out. I puppet them. Stay in. Stay in and puppet with me. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. How, how do you how do you puppet them? <laughs> <laughs> well, when, uh, when, 
instant versus bedtime. let's say there's a two set, two girls, and a guy goes in and starts talking to them. I can come up to him and whisper in his ear, you taking good care of my girl? And he's like, oh, sorry, man. And I'm like, no, no, no worries. Did you see the fight outside? Two girls fighting? Just stack openers and keep them in. But he's been there's many team. ways where you do the karate coin chop on his hand. Oh, and... Karate coin snatch where you, where you can snatch a coin from someone's hand. It's a demonstration of your speed, agility, and intelligence. Uh, that's a fun do it three to, times. To, to use but the thing the is, time. most guys would go and do that on the girl to try and think that's going to impress the girl. But Eric picks the the biggest guy in the set and does it on mm -hmm. them. Well, Eric and they love like, him for Eric, it. Eric was like six foot five. Typically, he's the biggest guy. I'm yeah, assuming. but they love him for it. No, no, I'm slender. No, I, I know that. Like easy. I got you. I've got well, he does it on Matador. He's done it on Matador, so that will tell you. Like that. Matador's pretty big. Matador from the show. Big Matador. Boom. Is that the dude from Vegas? Uh, in the no, pickup eyes, the TV show. He, he was uh, my co-star, my wingman in both seasons of the pickup artist mm. yeah have you seen it alex i've Good watched man. like small clips here and there but i have not watched oh that. we're gonna have to send oh, you a it's link it's a great show you'd love it i would love to link. watch it with a girl it's actually female friendly to watch it with a with a girl it's a it's a date show you can okay, watch it together sure. yeah shoot, shoot shoot my way i guess let me let me kind of uh wrap it up with this question what about we talked a lot about nighttime what about daytime like you see you see a girl walking around by herself uh i'm assuming you're not merging sets during the daytime or correct no I, I to be honest you know i've had bonus rounds in the day in the past but in the last while i'm not finding the type of woman i'm looking for i'm looking for a double act i want to be a part of a double act mystery and someone mystery and someone not mystery and some hottie mystery and i want her to have a personality i want her to be beautiful i want her to have a beautiful face but i want a personality and a brand and a character and you don't find that walking around in the day really okay i guess we just have a totally different perspective on that i always found i get you and I'm, I'm world traveling so we're starting fresh in a city and gaming from the streets to the clubs to the rooftop patios, we're doing it all. Interesting. I'm My observation has always I'm been that, that at the at the bars you find girls who are a little bit hotter, but uh, personality wise, you tend to get like nicer girls. I find during the daytime. Uh, well, yeah. you know what? There's a there's a beautiful common ground between the two, and that is daytime rooftop patios or six eight p.m. Yeah. Rooftop patios are the are the most lucrative places, the ones in Kiev, the ones in St. Petersburg, uh, New York City as well, that the rooftop patios are replete with beautiful women. So yeah, yeah you have an hour there rather than game the outside streets. When all you have to do is go in, go up the elevator, and you get a two degrees higher quality of human <laughs> being. No, <laughs> no woman. I do agree. Happy hour is pretty good. You get a better ratio during happy hour than you at night. Um, yeah, I guess I mean we've covered a lot of shit. Uh, but yeah, we I, did. We did. I appreciate both of you guys coming on. So tell the people where they can find you. How can they support you? How can they uh, do a boot camp? With uh, you? Sure. So, well, how can I support them? I've written some some books on the elegant art of the cold approach pickup, and they are available in my digital store at askmystery.com. Baxter, oh. you want to tell them about the upcoming boot camps, our live training events? Well, we have Helsinki coming up, and that's at the end of April and the 1st of May. That's um, a super famous event that we do every year because angels of people live there. It's very and cool. don't forget Barcelona. I'm in Barcelona, and you're supposed He's to come here next week, and we're going to do a boot camp at the end of the month here. Don't forget. But yeah, check out, check out. We've got videos that will tell you more about it, like a trailer on the Bexter lifestyle, B-E-C-K-S-T-E-R. And also go to askmystery.com, this way, askmystery.com. And uh, oh, ask, mystery, uh, ask Mystery uh, IG and Rob Bexter IG. So yeah, 
that's it. Yeah, that's all I'll say. And, so and we'll keep you in the game. We'll get you back inspired to game more, to get out of the house more, and to meet more beautiful women. That's what yeah, we do. We're active. So we're active PUAs. We always have been. We always will be. Yeah, guys, all the links are going to be in the description. So check that out. Uh, big thanks to uh, Mystery and Bexter for coming on. Hey, it was uh, fun, man. Yeah, yeah had fun. Let's, definitely, let's definitely do another one in the future. There's a million other questions I could ask you, but that would make this go for 10 I hours. bet. Well, we'll have more time, don't worry. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys. Have a good Game night. Game on, brother. It's been emotional. Take it easy. Take care. Bye-bye, guys.